Wag Wag Lids, this is so exciting. The biggest announcement in the history of Have A Word. Adam? It's not just the biggest announcement in the history of Have A Word, though, is it? It's the biggest announcement of either of our lives. Friday, the 9th of December, is going to be this year's only Have A Word live show. We're doing one this year. Dan, where is it? It's at the M&S Bank Arena, not the auditorium. This is the huge arena. 10,000 people! <laughs> 10,000 people. The MS Bank Arena in Liverpool. It goes on Patreon pre sale on Wednesday, the 6th of April, and public sale on Friday, the 8th of April. This is going to be like nothing we've ever done before, nothing that has ever been seen anywhere in the world before. This is going to be an absolute extravaganza. All your favourite guests we've had in Have a Word in the past. We're so excited. If you're a lid, you will not be able to miss this. This is colossal. I've, I, I just, it's hard to put into words. We've been trying to sort of do this advert now on like four or five takes. There's nothing we can say apart from get your tickets. There's going to be thousands of you there. Patreon pre-sale on Wednesday. Public sale on Friday, the 8th of April. Go and get your tickets. The, all the links are on the screen and in the description. This is going to be the best thing we've ever done. And it's going to be a celebration of what will be nearly yes. three years of what have away. We've been building yeah. towards this. Let's make some history. Go and get your tickets as soon as they're available. Come and see us! Wag Wag Lids, before this amazing episode of Have A Word, we need to tell you about our Patreon, which is one of the best Patreons in world comedy. We are officially the fastest growing Patreon on the planet at the minute. <laughs> fastest growing Patreon, and that's because for just three quid, five quid, or ten quid a month, you get an extra episode a week, early access to these public episodes, and access to the entire back catalogue of all the Patreon stuff we've done in the past, which includes... The specials, the ghost hunts... The lockdown lock-ins, which are now fucking legendary. Some of the live shows, it's the best money you will ever spend. The roast event oh, is yeah. going on Patreon oh, yeah. early in March. You get to see that. You also get early access to my tour tickets, Dan's tour tickets, live show tickets. And to be honest with you, live show tickets don't really last very long on Patreon. So if you're not a patron, you're probably not being able to come to any of them that we've put on recently. You're only going to get to be there if you sign up at patreon.com slash have a pod and join the 10,000 strong army of fucking lunatics. Megan. Wag Wag Leads, you're listening to the funniest podcast in the game with Adam, Dan, Sensei Kal, and Finn. This is the one and only Have a Word. Brought to you by Manscaped.com, the very best in below the belt men's grooming. Go, Ed, get on me. Have you, um, have you got, uh, Parkinson's? What's happened with that cup of tea? It's coffee. Fucking hell, mate. I mean, I You've had a right fucking. I mean, if I did have Parkinson's at the minute, that would be really insensitive, wouldn't it? I can tell him someone like that. Oh, no, it's just on the side. You've just had a little spill. Yeah, it's just... You look like you've had a... All the way back from the coffee-making area. Over here? (laughs) Over there. (sighs) I'm in a permanently good mood at the minute. Just always just in a good mood. Permanently good mood. It does help when you're winning bear awards at the Chortle Awards, doesn't it? I mean, that makes you feel pretty good. I mean, we all won an award. No, you could. <laughs> fucking liar. We are the champions, my yeah. friend. Ah. I mean, to I get, think every, to I get think... all of them. To get... All, and you also... Like, we've got to remember Beat the Frog as well because yeah, they the got frog, missed yeah. off the tweet and then the frog were like, oh, Dan, you've already forgotten I didn't the know they'd won that. No. So they so, won Best New Comedy Club. Hot Water won Best Club. Alfie won Best Show. Adam was, won Best uh, Club Comedian and we won Best Podcast. Up your fucking ass! Up the word. Oh, I. It's really, really funny, isn't it? Because Chortle for years, like the, a big criticism of it and a very valid one is that it's so London-centric and that it hates Northern comedy. And then it's an absolute clean sweep for Northern comedy. And obviously Alfie's London-based, but he's fucking one of ours, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think the lids have been a big part of that, haven't they? I think these award shows might stop nominating us soon because... The, just gonna win every time. the public vote thing is so unbelievably unfair if we're involved. Yeah. Uh, so like, I'm not the best the club strongest. comedian in the country, according to Chortle. I'm the best who got nominated who has 12,000 patrons. No, I think you'd have won that anyway. I'm not saying that as you mean. Yeah, I think you've... I mean, all, you of, those, got all of those guys were very good, but it does help that you're very, very good and you've got ultras, lids, the lid army, and then all the, the fucking pubes. 
who, by the way, we don't, we're not, it's not like, I know we give them stick, stick for not signing up to Patreon, but they're a massive part of that vote as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, club comedian who hasn't done a club in two months. Yeah, but, th- so this is the thing. So, uh, f- first of all, I'll just say this. When it, So they announced on Chortle, when the, uh, the vote and closed, they said uh, the Chortle awards voting is now closed and almost 10,000 votes have been cast. And the second I seen that, I went, oh, we've won everything. Because at least half of them <laughs> would yeah. have been our patrons. Um, yeah, so when I got nominated for cl- Best Club Comedian, I remember... There was a couple of colleagues of mine who were like, why the fuck are they nominating you for Club Comedian? You've got a 70-day tour at the minute. Here's the thing. I take, like, for years within comedy, Club Comedian has been a sneer. He's just a club comic. I called me special for a reason. I'm very proud that that's where I started and I still identify as that. And I will always be, as far as I'm concerned, a club comic. All the best comics are club comics. Yeah. yeah. I will never not be a comic who does the clubs. Oh, yeah. Like... When you say I haven't done a club for two months, I haven't done a weekend at a comedy club for two months. I've been a hot water in the middle of this tour and just gone and yeah, fucked about on a Monday and a Wednesday because that's how you stay good. Yeah. And all the best American comics, when they're done with their tour, they go back to the comedy clubs and they work it out. And I will always do that, no matter how successful I get and how many tour tickets I'm selling and how many tour dates I'm selling. I'm So if there was any award of the Chortle Awards I'd give a shit about, I'd want to win that one. Congrats, man. It's Thank nice. You. Very, very nice. Does feel, and also, I didn't get nominated or win best compare. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you. That was honestly the biggest win of the night. Me not being nominated or winning. Thank you, Chortle. Um, it's so funny, isn't it? Because you're like, oh, fucking Chortle. What a load of fucking bullshit. Oh my god, did we win. Nice one. Thank you. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah. Oh, but you, you can. The year I got the four and a half stars, I got it early in the fringe. No one had got a five stars. And on the uh, reviews that you went on Chortle, right, and it was me and David O'Doherty who I've just said all the best comics are club comics. It's not actually true. There are amazing comics who are festival comics and whatnot. Uh, all my favourites usually are the guys that like, have smashed the clubs and in America. But then there are some amazing comics like David O'Doherty, who you'll probably never see in a club. But I was very proud of that. And I, literally at the start of that fringe, I was like, I might even tell uh, Chortle to fuck off. I might just say, don't bother. I'm a northern white comic. You're, you're bored of it. You don't need to do it. I nearly sent an email going, do you want to just ignore me? And just leave me alone and not do the if you stars. You got four and a half. Though. I got four and a half. I was like, God, I fucking love Chortle. Really, I respect <laughs> them. You can you, know, you can them. also though say that like the idea of reviewing comedy from people who've never done it and the fact that Chortle has been so London centric for so long is also bullshit. And there's a lot of shite around it, and you can not like it, and also still just be like, oh, we won an award that is mainly voted for by the public and the industry. You can still be happy about it. Absolutely, and. Um, Appreciate everyone who voted. And when we ask for you to vote and stuff like that, I know like it's not all the time and everything, but it's massive when you sort of mobilize. Because there are some massive podcasts. I said this the last time when we won Pod Bible. Massive podcasts we're going against. And they've got huge listenerships that just aren't as hardcore as us. No way near. So when when we go, please, could you do this? And you're like, fucking yes. No, they've got I casual love that listeners. Commitment. We've got a uh, uh, 12,000 member. We could, I reckon we could go um, around the world and there's a core group who follow us to everyone. Yeah. The Ultras. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know who they are as well. So, massive. Oh, I got a parking a speeding ticket. I got a parking space. I got, well done, mate. <laughs> hey, top of the league! Hey, he's top I, of the league. Well done, lad. Me bung worked. It was a bung, though. Oh, it was an Abramovich. Golden ticket to watch me at any comedy show or doing a poo from here till the end of time. I, I got told not to tell anyone, so I'm just going to tell half a million people or however many listen this week. I, I just, uh, on me on my way into my building the other day, a member of staff, I won't mention who it was, she just went, where's my free tickets to your tour show? I went, where's me fucking parking space? The next day I got what a, a What a friendly people they are in Liverpool. <laughs> Where's my fucking ticket, lad? Where's my parking space? And the next day she rang me and she's like, uh, got you a parking space. Tell no one. Apart from. It was in a bag as well. She everyone on the. <laughs> there's a parking space. Park it in here. Don't worry. <laughs> it's a big envelope. 
Was it in your new car, Daniel? Oh, you naughty. Oh, Have you been speeding with your top down? What are you meant to do? <laughs> it's fast. <laughs> You're meant to drive it fast. What, what were you doing I'm in what? I'm shitting it now. Was it a Because part? I got it last Thursday. I did 61 and a 50 where you got the, uh, uh, on the, coming off yeah. the bridge. Me too. Fucking run corn. Just let people drive through you quickly. You run corn. <laughs> <sighs> How did you get done there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's oh, all me. three of us now. <laughs> yeah. Dickhead. But I've been driving like a fucking bell end for a week and a half. And it's taken them a week to send the speeding oh, fine. Dear. I'm now shitting it that there's going to be letter after letter like, you're a fucking bell end, you're a bell end. And then I'm going to get <laughs> Freddie Quinn in six months off. You cannot challenge four speeding tickets by going, I got a Z4 and it's faster than anything <laughs> I've ever got. And the top was down and I'm bald and the <laughs> air was fl the flowing through my head. <laughs> I'm scared. I've only, I've only just got it remapped. Oh, fuck. Damn. You're I, fucked, yeah. I, 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 so go. I got well, it, picked it get, up from getting remapped. If you get banned. And then got the speeding ticket. I was like, I've just made it faster. If you get banned, I'll drive it for you. To, make, to keep the engine warm. That sound, like, you know. Cool. You need another parking space then? No, I'll just sell my car. Oh, nice one, lad. And then That's in cool. six months, I'll buy a new car. Or I'll buy yours off you. And you, you can buy do? a new car. It's not even that fast. It's all, oh, I thought I was getting pulled over on the motorway by the plod. I haven't heard plod for a while. The Taking that back. 5 0. 5 0. Busies. Busy sounds right in Scotland. The what rats, the scum. The, busies, the rats, the easy. pieces of shit. Easy, easy. They don't, they don't write for the paper. The, the, um, the lowest of society. The hat wearing cunts. We call paramedics health grasses, you know. <laughs> all right. Or, um, all right, good fellas. Pig twats. <laughs> fucking bullshit. Fuck, I'm Adam Rowe. Don't live by the fucking laws, mate. Someone breaks in my house. These are, this is my judicial system. I go out there and start fucking you, taking names. Uh, 999, you swill, I've been broken in. You swill drinking fucking scumbags. Thank you for protecting us. Pig cunts. The lowest form of human that... <laughs> Black lives matter. We, we, call the, we call that paramedics health glasses. Yeah. And fire glasses. And yeah. firemen. Yeah, there's a paramedic that lives across the road from us called Health Simon. Class. And if you go, how fuck is, Simon. If you go, how was work? Oh, it's, I, I don't know. He's just one of them, and he's honest. And you're like, oh, I should never ask that question again. It's a paramedic through COVID, isn't it? Like, oh yeah, it's just grim. Um, so you got pulled over. What do Scousers call busies? Busies, busies is right, isn't it? The busies. Rats. All right, Adam, you're not actually one in time. organized crime. Yeah, stop making out scum. Now we call them one fuck one time, off. one time or the five all. 5 -0. Do you know why they get what, called one time? What's one time? Because you only look, look once and then you look away. Yeah, because if you look again, they're going to bust you. If you look again, you look suspicious. So you look and you're like, one time. Don't look again. Like... <laughs> if you, if you, if you, if you do that, you're finished. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> they're on to you. Then. Well, I did that. In Liverpool, maybe. In Cheshire, like, hello, officer. <laughs> Thank you for protecting us. <laughs> so I was going, um, I just touched my phone. You can't do that no more, can you? The new laws. Six six yeah. points. Yeah, I just touched six it points. to wake it up for me, sat nav. And there was a busy car and a lay by. Have you not got it on a little thingy thing? No, it, it's in his car. Um and the busy car was in a lay by. And as I drove past, it matched the speed and then joined the motor. And I was like, ah, what what have I done here? Turn his lights on. And then this fucking Range Rover comes speeding up next to me. And like that. Police Range Rover? Yeah, like a big bastard fella. And then I was like, oh, what the fuck? And then... Two of them? Yeah, two of them. And the one behind me pulled out, drove past me, and then they boxed the car in front. <laughs> they boxed the car in, and then slowly slowed it down. And then, like, jumped out with the guns in there. With the guns? Yeah, like, put, like he was, like, throwing them over the bonnet. What is it? What's he done to his phone? But he was, I slowed down, and then just, like... Well, I didn't see what happened after that. Yeah. I thought I was getting busted. It's weird, that new law, though, isn't it? That you can't touch your phone, but you can touch anything else. You can have a trombone, <laughs> but you can't touch your phone. I don't think you touch can have anything else. I don't think you can, you can have, have a, a child on the you dashboard. You can play the saxophone at 70 miles an hour. <laughs> oh, no, you can't. And the police will not bat an eyelid. Uh, you dude. send one text Here message to prison. Adam Law. <laughs> Why are you in jail? You see, Adam Law. <laughs> hey, no, it is a legal fact. Unadulterated legal fact. You can play a saxophone at 70 miles an hour. <laughs> show me, show me the law. Show me the law. This says that that's all right. Fuck off. Have you seen a fella who eats phone-shaped cookies in the car? 
So when they come over, they go, oh, what if I broke the law for eating a cookie? And just eat. You, you're actually not allowed to do anything at the wheel that would distract you from driving, so you can't eat or drink. Or play a saxophone. You can't. There's exemption you never, from saxophones. You ne- come on. You never go. If you have a water and you take a drink, you're never getting points for that, It depends you? how much of a scumbag the fucking pig is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what if it's a phone-shaped water bottle? Love it when he put, when he acts hard. <laughs> you know saying, I go from rags to riches. Oh, I'm not I'm not saying that I'm hard. I'm not saying I can beat every busy up <laughs> on my own. Ninety five percent though. <laughs> I'm saying I know people who could handle situations. Scottish for me. John, you know Scottish John. <laughs> Scottish John doesn't get his hands dirty. Oh yeah, he's Scottish done time. John. Yeah, oh, he's done. I've done my fucking time. The police are in his pocket anyway. Oh, he pays him off. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Crooked, yeah. crooked cops. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, makes sense. Yeah. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> so but if thought- you do get a particularly conty pig, then if you if, if you have a sip of coffee, there's loads of police. I fucking hope you get pulled over and fingered. Why? I ju- I, because you deserve it. They won't dare finger me. Not with my IBS. If they listen to this, they know I'll <laughs> shit down his arm. Down his arm, he's thinking of from below. Oh, please, if you work for the police, just pull this cunt over. He so deserves it. Why? Because you fuck a pig. Like you, like you, some part of some fucking crime syndicate. <laughs> I'm just saying, you absolute. Pube. I'm not, not slagging anyone off. I'm saying they're the lowest form of people. Part of the <laughs> what is going on? Scum. You're pigs. accountable to your own bullshit. <laughs> pull him over. Five zero. <laughs> not Cheshire Police. No one. Hello, time. Adam. Lovely to see you. Love your performances. The one time. One time. One time. Oh, yeah, you're so badass, you. One time. Fuck it Whoa, lad, the one time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember the fucking police rolling up on our Catholic college. <laughs> we were like, fuck off, pigs. <laughs> we're trying to do our sociology A-level. <laughs> <laughs> fucking bummer. Search me if you want. Search me. I've only got a calculator. They haven't got a warrant, actually. What? You ain't got no warrant, pig. Can't search me. Fuck we got a warrant, pig. <laughs> So I used to say, <laughs> don't ring no busy. Don't even talk to the cops. <laughs> Fuck them. <laughs> Fuck a piglet. I going. I once told Fuck the, a pig in I the once city. told the cops to move on. And they did once. The Albert. They Dock, love that. They love that. The Albert Dock is privately owned property, and unless the police are invited on, they may not come on. And I once told. Who are you, Albert? How do you? Who do you decide? I used to work there. Right. You know. For the dock. No. Well, the Albert Dock is private land, so like the police can't, they've got no jurisdiction. Oh, you're right, you're right, you're right. Because once you <laughs> once you go to Baby Blue, you can just <laughs> stab someone. And no. the, poli- the police are just at the gates, you know, near the Hilton going, for oh, another stabbing, lads. What can we do? It, there's no jurisdiction. No, they get invited then. Oh, invited. What, come do you on. Think, do you think, come on. Do you think they're vampires? Yeah. They can't come in unless they're invited. Uh, who invites the police? Carl, who is the assistant manager of Baby Blue. It's a fact. Right. So you ask them to... No, but like, you know, like the basic laws are like public indecency and that. Like, obviously, if I get me arsehole out in the middle of Concert Square and shit on the floor, <laughs> you can arrest me for that. Because Con- the public Con- Concert Square. It's been done before, right? right? Saturday night. If I did that, you can arrest me on the Albert Dock. No. You can't, unless the owner of the Albert Dock is like, stop him. <laughs> <laughs> he's yeah. off in there with a telescope. Lord Albert is just, and he's up there on the top. Someone's shitting. Hang on, you Dirty. think the owner's called Albert Dock? Oh, you're right. I don't. I don't, Carl. I don't. It's been silly. Um, thank you. You're right. Thanks for pulling me up. Hey, do, you want, do you want me to? Thank you. Is that the new one? Yes. Is oh, it? Matthew. Matthew. That was fast, that. Yeah. Well, Came yesterday as well. Yes. No jurisdiction. Yeah. What can you get away with, you know? Because you don't trust the fucking busies, do you? No, you can't do like... Why, is that... Why didn't you rent somewhere on the dock and then you could just live a crime full life? <laughs> full? Filled life. You should have just rented on the docks. Because I like to live on the edge. So I'm on the on edge the of the docks. On the edge of the docks. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> fucking busy. And in your jurisdiction, still don't give a fuck. Them pussies living on the docks. <laughs> Easy not giving a fuck about the busies on the docks. What about the coast? You got a. F- what about the coast guard? Oh, coast guard that's sound. where the jurisdiction. What the starts. seagrass? Seagrass. <laughs> Don't trust them either, mate. Fuck. They're in cahoots with the fucking fishing. There. I like the coast guard. Oh, yeah, he's pro coast guard. What? I'm pro coast guard. <laughs> pro. 
Yeah, because yeah, he's always keeping kite. all the fucking walls out, mate. Keeping bacon at bay. With what? What? <laughs> Uzis. <laughs> That's all keeping they get all the Keeping all the walls out? Yeah. What do you think they are? Like, Africans on a dinghy trying to get to Italy. <laughs> They're coming through the tunnel. What? They're coming through the tunnel. Yeah. Yeah, but, but the, the, they got to pay. Nah, they got to pay the toll for that. <laughs> that's what. That's what. That's what Liverpool's expected. <laughs> All of the Birkenhead walls are like. I think we need to go to Liverpool. We are going to emigrate to Liverpool. In that voice, because yeah. that's a wall voice essentially, isn't it? Of course. I think we should go on dinghies. Not expecting it. Underestimating them. No, with the Coast Guard's there with Uzis. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, and, and that's what they do just yeah. before they shoot. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, lad! It's quite a short distance gun as well. You'd have to back to Hamilton to... Square, you cunt. Fuck it, oh. <laughs> Don't mess with the Coast Guard. It's having rough as fuck. I will shoot a hole in your fucking dinghy and the next shot going through you. <laughs> no, back over there. <laughs> Turn it around. <laughs> Where would you aim? I hate your questions. <laughs> Fucking hate your questions. I can see it in his eyes. If uh, if war struck the UK, what are you on about? <laughs> Where would you get your dinghy to, Daniel? Where would I get my dinghy to? Oh, yeah. Isle of Man, innit? Isle of Man. Who no, gets... they're getting fucked up then. Amsterdam. What 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 are you talking about? If war struck the UK, where are you safe? Where's a quick just go to the Isle of Man, go and hang out with Nelson with all like It's not the UK though. The island people. Isn't that crossed as the UK? I think it'd be safe. I think the Channel be Islands. Wouldn't be the last Can't call up island people anymore. Island Aye. boys, isn't it? It's a slur against the Isle of Man. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It is. It's basically you've as bad as the at, these You've days. been looking at Sophie Hagen's Twitter. <laughs> maybe, I, I, I'm I, not I, from the Isle of Man, so maybe I don't have an opinion. I'm not talking about her. I'm not talking about her. I'm not oh, giving I, her the I attention just, she craves. What's the word you, you can't say? stupid fucking gobshite what's cunt. What's the word you can't... <laughs> <laughs> We're all blocked. <laughs> The whole of the police force, and now Sophie Haken. Everyone's getting burnt down, and we're winning the awards doing in it. What's the word you can't say on the Alaman? Is it rat? Yeah. Can't say the word rat on the Alaman. We'd be fucked. That's actually a fact. You can't call someone a rat. That is like akin to like calling That's... someone's mother a fucking cum guzzling whore. Which we do every third week. Yeah. On this, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but like, is the dead You wouldn't do it to a stranger, would you? Is it on their flag or something? Or is it the three legs, isn't it? Three legs on it, but there's something to do with rats in the island, man. Is it the plague? Yeah. The plague. Don't say rat on there. What happened? Hey, shout out the island, man. If you, um, if you know what the rat thing is. Can we pull it up? Do we know? I think do it's know? double T as well, isn't it? Rat. That's double A. Rat. It's also Welsh. Rats. Rat. 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 Um, How do they have ratted two of them? Long tail if it's a use reason to denote rat. A relatively superstition. It's a superstition. It's bad luck mentioning the word. Yeah, so you so can't they, they you can't say, say it, but it's no, just... they say long tail instead of rat. <laughs> the old long tail. Yeah, uh, I reckon you'd be safe there for a bit if the UK gets invaded. If there's war, just fuck off to there. I'd, I'd go Amsterdam. Me, I'd be the best comic on the Isle of Man. I'd get a kayak from fucking great Newcastle to Amsterdam. So where is the invasion coming from that you're going to mainland Europe to be safe? Um, I Canada. felt like the Isle of Man was going away Canada. from the Canada. problem. Canada, Canada the well. Canadians, yeah, classic <laughs> because. Just like the fucking walls coming over the Mersey, we weren't expecting an attack from Canada. Yeah. yeah. Underestimate them. We said hockey was shit. Trudeau. We said hockey was shit. And they were like, whoa, let's go, lad. Let's start a war. And then Trudeau came. He was at the front like, hey. Trudeau. Trudeau. <laughs> Good stuff. Thank you for the question, Carl. <laughs> Loved it. <laughs> Are you gigging on the Isle of Man for your tour? Yeah. Oh, it nice. was a mistake. Why? <laughs> he's great when he's just won awards. <laughs> he's fun. <laughs> this is exciting. Oh, my God. The police, Hagen, and now the Isle of Man. Go for it, Adam. So, every single date I've done so far on my tour has sold out. All of them. Right. The people who run the venue in the Isle of Man got in touch with me. Yeah. like, right, we've got an 850-seater. Do you want it? And I was like, it's great. I was like, that's probably a bit big for me. And they were the like, island. there's nothing else on. You'll fucking smash it. Yeah, exactly. So they were like, uh, no, we, we'll we'll give you the guarantee. So you're not going to lose any money. And I was like, right, okay. And they're like, and we're pretty confident you'll you'll fill it. A fifty. Paul Smith sold it out in two shows in an hour and a half. So you'll be fine. I was like, okay, great. Um, 
I think at last count, nine. I think we've sold nine. No, it's not. It's Whoa. we've sold we've sold like a nearly two hundred or something. But in an eight hundred and fifty seater, that's just not enough. Oh, mate, 200 people in the right room is a fucking great gig. 200 people in 800, not good. I haven't actually checked it in a while. It might be more now. But, right, um, Isle of Man, come on. Come on, let's do it. Accent? What's the Isle of Man's accent? Uh, hello, welcome to the Isle of Man. Oh, is it, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're very, they're, like, you know, it's sort of like... Nordic. Scandinavian. It's Scandinavian. And then, it, and then it's sort of Southwest Iceland, England. Greenland. Together. Uh, hello, welcome to Isle of Man. Yeah. yeah. It's very similar to the accent in Newfoundland. Yeah, spot on. I don't know what it's that fact. is either. So in Please Newf don't say rat. Have I never told you about when I went to watch Come From Away and I couldn't get me head around the accent? Oh, yeah, where they landed the plane. Yeah, so the, the musical Come From Away is about the planes that landed in Newfoundland, Gander in Canada, uh, during 9-11. And I, I thought all the actors <laughs> had... <laughs> What's the matter? It's not Hamilton, I is it? I don't know how we started talking about musicals, though. It's a play. Is it a musical? It's a musical. Oh, Welcome to the rack. Just say it. Oh. <laughs> What's your problem with musicals? Just say it. Oh. Just, what do you mean? Okay. Like, whatever they're saying. Oh, like, yeah. whatever they're singing. What's he doing? I don't know. Oh, just trying not off to bells. end my own life. Just say it. Instead of singing it. Oh, we're going to shops. Da, 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 da. What do you want? Do you want a cup of tea? Let's go hang on the shop. No, you want the play about that. I'm going to shops. Do you want a cup of tea? Great play. See, much better spoken word. You're right, Carl. Gripping play that. No, I'm, going, no. I, I'm going, like properly acted though. I'm going the shops. Do you want a cup of tea? Better, innit? Serious acting. Stop taking four minutes to ask, to say, oh, I'm lonely. <laughs> Oh, the famous I'm Lonely song. I'm lonely. I'm lonely. He knows what I'm on about. I'm knocking on the door. No one's in. <laughs> you're not lonely. You're unpopular. Are you, are you thinking of waving through a window? From yes. Evan Blow the shite. From waving what? through a window. Oh, my God. Was that an actual song from an actual musical? I thought yeah. you were just being a dick. No. <laughs> no one likes me. And he takes four and a half minutes to say it. And, and he like, says it again. He everyone's repeat. like, oh, the big announcement. Oh, the big announcement. Is it? Is it Dan coming out? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fucking musical, boy. No, it was uh, amazing when I first watched um, I Love Cock, the Newfoundland <laughs> musical, where they found some dicks in Newfoundland. They were like, oh, my God. Oh, oh, oh. I've watched that. Oh. Hey, hey, what are these dicks, eh? Oh, my God. It's Canadian. No, I like films with songs in. School of Rock, yeah. superb, but it's a song. But films when they're just singing the story literally boil my I blood. don't like it in films, apart from like cartoons. Like The Lion King is amazing. And that's a musical. Every, every 30 seconds a new song yeah, starts, it, it's it, a musical. It, 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 it I know, is. I know. I know. But you're like, no, it's a good cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly. Right. My you hate, see what my, happened there? Yeah, yeah. I completely deleted his entire <laughs> argument. He's like, but I like The Lion King. My, my <laughs> Jungle hate, Book's good as well. My yeah. hatred of musicals goes to Disney and I'm like, oh, shut up. I love Disney. I think Disney's its own thing. No, like it's this. Oh, uh, I've lost my car keys. <laughs> <laughs> That's just people who love the West End, isn't it? It does me head in. It's I, fantastic, I never, and you'll love it. And we're going to, we're going to see one when we're in London. For, we're there for Dylan Moran and my fourth London tour date now on sale. Um, the night after that, we've got a night off, and we are going to see a show. I've, I've I, listen. I've been to Broadway. Been to the West. I've been there all of them. But the <laughs> shite West, Broadway, the West End, uh, <laughs> Central Lincoln. I've been to them all. Saw the School of Rock um, on Broadway. Grimsby Quayside. Did you like it? Yeah. So what are you talking about then? Because I already like the film. Right. It's just an adaptation. Right. Hey, I, don't, I just Finn, don't... before you even join in, shut up, Finn. <laughs> Shaking your big Welsh Turkish head. I'm... I'm, I'm uh, actually, it's phenomenal music. I'm too impatient for them to sing what they could say in 10 seconds. It pisses me off. And you'd really like apart Hamilton. From, apart from Disney. You'd prefer the Lion King if Simba was like, can't wait to be king, me. And they were like, yeah, yeah, we understand why. It's going to be a big promotion for you. Yeah. Move the film on. Make the Lion King 14 minutes long. It was actually about people from the Wirral 
The Lion King. Yeah, but you can't you can't explain that in words. That's an event, isn't it? And you're seeing it. This is just oh, Carl, like you're really name. contradicting your own argument and your hatred of musicals. I'm I'm on your side, but you're fucking it up with the love of Disney. So if you're no, gonna I, dig your heels on something, make sure your argument is resolute, like I, mine always is. I think Disney is a different thing. Sorry, I just don't like men talking about what the shit I'm saying. You like cartoons though. Yeah, who doesn't like yeah, cartoons? Yeah, yeah. Men cartoons? Yeah, I love men cartoons. <laughs> I just don't like men singing. <laughs> Get a job. Get down the fucking mines. Stop fucking acting and dancing. <laughs> or just act. <laughs> hey, I'm going to the shop. Do you want a cup of tea? In that order. Where do I get my tea? The shop. <laughs> what shop is it? <laughs> Fucking home and bargains. Who's going to the shop for a cup of tea? I don't know. These cunts. Hey, I'm lonely. Let me in. <laughs> that is the song, Dad. Yeah, I know, yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> the door, the door. Oh, no. Go on, kid. Hey, I'm ringing the doorbell. Got some tap, tap, tapping on oh, the glass. He had to do it right, See? He Waving had to... through a window. He had to do it right. He couldn't be like, no, no. Blah, blah, Try to speak, wrong. but nobody can hear. So I wait around for an answer to appear while I'm rock, rock, 28 minutes, people right? Pass. Do you remember 14 minutes ago? Waving like, through a window. I'm out of row. <laughs> Fucking pit. Don't even look. I don't even look once. I can smell bacon. Don't even need to look at the fucking pigs. Pull me over. I will fucking shoot you. Or do some musical theatre. I hate the busy. Drive, drive, drive. Oh no. What's that in the mirror? It's a fucking pig. La 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 la. Oink, oink. Don't pull me over. Don't give me six points. Hey, you're a phenomenal contradiction, bro. Look, I can hate police and love musicals all at the same time. It's just, things that, it's just more things that have never been said in the history of man. <laughs> Fucking hate the busies. Unless they are keeping West End musicals safe. And then I salute you, PC Plot. Is it a police musical? Because, because dirty dancing needs protecting. Oh, shit. Why? Jason Manford's been in loads of musicals. <laughs> yeah, he has, yeah. Sweeney Todd, shite. Chichi <laughs> Bang Bang Belter, because it's from me childhood. Guys and dolls. <laughs> Carl, Carl hates musicals. <laughs> Hang on. Unless he heard of them before he was 18. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, it's got flying cars in it. Oh, lad. Hamilton's got the American Civil War in it. <gasps> Fuck off, got a flying. Oh my God, flying cars in the American Civil War, it's the same thing. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, I'll say it to him, I'll see what he says. Listen, tune into part three. Yeah, great. So we've got three Don't. cunts singing and dancing. Don't go anywhere. He loves it. Manford fucking loves it. Manford's got a bit of the old showman in him and he'll bring that out and then Finn will be like tapping along with his finger. <laughs> well, we'll breaking the fucking keyboard. We'll be really hurt, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just I'm very impatient, and it moves over into musicals. I also hate period dramas because nothing happens, nothing happens. They all just go, oh yeah, and then just talk for a bit and then go. Oh. Yeah, that's yeah. Like Sense and Sensibility, described by. <laughs> <laughs> what happens? Well, all right, what all right. happens in Pride and Prejudice? What happens? Uh, it's a very complicated Someone love story. Someone refuses to change their prejudice beliefs because they've got too much pride. Nailed it. I mean, that is. <laughs> The answer of the kid that didn't read the book or, or watch the But I think it's about uh, someone who's dead prejudiced. He hates Asians. He's also proud of it, of his culture as a white. It's actually about race, I imagine. And he realises that his prejudice is sort of counteracts the pride of the Asian community. And by the end, they're all sound. Oh, no. East is East. <laughs> I always get them mixed up. Fucking <laughs> 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 bullshit. Nothing happens in these oh, films. Oh, uh, got Carl. Nothing. Unless you watched the period drama when you were young. Oh, fuck him, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love fucking. I love Emma. Watched it when I was 10. <laughs> Oh, I hate them. You need to open your mind and your heart to new stories. Apart from the police, fuck them. <laughs> but for musicals and also period what about drama, the, band? the police can listen to them. Same word. He, he, he takes a lot of shots, and sometimes he misses. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, I want it to be in the YouTube comments. <laughs> oh, no, Carl, absolute clunger, that meat. <laughs> Lady, egg there, kid. 
I just hate when things don't happen in films. Like I'd rather watch like, I don't know, something else. <laughs> Genuinely, if you if that's how you feel about musicals, you will you are gonna like Hamilton when I take you to see it because it's very fast moving. Isn't Maybe it? I will like it, but you've spoken about it that much that I'd rather fucking cut my arms off. Why? <laughs> Why would you not rather just like have your opinion changed? Because I don't want to concede. <laughs> <laughs> no. And let's go and watch Hamilton. It, it will be. It will be great. Will, like I love hip hop. It's hip hop, innit? It's more. Yeah. It's more fun. You know, just hating it because Adam loves it so much, to be fair. But everything I've seen on the West End has been fucking great. And I don't like, I really, I find it cringy. But it's, All right, we'll go it's then. always really well done. Now, when it gets really painful is when it's, this, when you're talking about the West End and Broadway, you're talking about the absolute pinnacle yeah. of musical theatre. There are so many leagues below that. Let's go and watch some amateur musical theatre. And you will. Right one. Isle, Isle of Man, the musical. Isle no, let That's don't gotta say be. Rat. Da, da, <laughs> don't, da, say rat. don't say rat. Where are you from, Buckinghead? Next year, <laughs> we're doing a musical. We're doing a live show, and it's a musical. Can you take the lead on this one, Adam? <laughs> Do we have to sing? Let, can we... this be your project? Can it be our project? No, I, need it. I think you you're going to be in it, though. Oh, I'll listen. You get that script you write to me, <laughs> and I will. <laughs> Hang on, a we on a sing, innit? Yeah. Rabbit. Right. And dance. Interesting. Adam's never writing this, is he? Just let it roll out. Finn, let, let, you, listen. you write a musical for us. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Finn, get that done. Based on what? <laughs> Just let the water run. Quick fit, the no. musical. Quick fit, the musical. No. It, we've honestly... Istanbul. Pro- uh, no, I'd rather... Do, I'd Are we doing... We, did you pick out the two things that have never been mentioned on this podcast ever? Yeah, quick fit, Istanbul. It's what we're known for. <laughs> Quick Fit Istanbul, famous Istanbul. Yeah, it's quick, quick fit. fit. It was five to five in Quick Fit, and a car came in, and he, it's not long enough to do it, and he got it done in six minutes. Oh, my friend, we cannot possibly do it. It is five to five. Mm. I don't know if you know Istanbul Quick Fit. We go home at five. The drama. <laughs> That's a five minute time. How are you exactly. filling that out for an done. hour and a half? No one's it's singing. It's a five minute musical. Yeah, because it goes back and shows you the story of how they all got there. <laughs> Oh, I'm in traffic in Istanbul. It's so close to rush hour in Istanbul. I have a flat tire in Istanbul. I need the quick fit in Istanbul. Cut to the quick fit, like, ha, ha, ha. We're nearly finished. We always go home at five o'clock because we are quick fit Istanbul. Sounds absolutely AIDS. <laughs> You've just wrote that. That's all the boss. Your first draft's never going to be perfect. I'd go and see that. Yeah. <laughs> what if it was animated? Oh, yes. <laughs> what the fucking cats. The Istanbul cats. Can't, there's already a musical called Cats. Oh, yeah. Was, is there a musical called Istanbul Quick Fit Cats? <laughs> oh, yeah, there is, isn't there? There is, isn't it? It's a spin off. I hope there is. I really hope there is. Istanbul Quick Fit Cats. <laughs> they fix your wheels and yeah. ties me out. <laughs> What's the kid called, Mr. Yeah. Mistopheles? That his name. What? What's in the kick in Mr. Will Offersley's? <laughs> it sounds <laughs> taken. Shot my shot. Shot my shot. Didn't even say it right. It's car standard bad. Uh-huh. Oh, whoa. Oh. Um I call time on that. Time. Excellent work, everyone. Thank you. Little silly break. silly. No break. Hello everyone, let's talk about one of our sponsors today. It's Nord VPN. Now I don't know loads about VPNs. But the man to my left here is addicted to the internet and he's an expert. See, the fact that you don't use VPN for your private little Danny time is insane to me. It's the most secure way to save the internet. You can set your location to anywhere on the planet and that means you get access to like, you can change it to America, you get American Netflix. You can change it to like Saudi Arabia and you get to watch the Premier League football with the six Saudi Arabian commentators on. You get to watch Premier League football that's at three o'clock that you can't get over here. It's just a sick way of tricking your computer or any device into thinking you're anywhere in the world. You, I can't recommend it enough. And the fact that they're now a sponsor and I get a, a membership of NordVPN for free is, it's the, my favorite sponsor I've had so far apart from Manscaped because they help me shave my balls. The deal is a two year deal plus one month for just 65 quid, $89, which is about 65 quid. It's an amazing deal. It is at nordvpn.com slash have a word, code word, have a word. Go and get it. Watch the footy, watch whatever you want. Tell your computer where you are. 
he doesn't get to tell you where you are. My computer sometimes looks at me without my VPN. I'm like, hey, we're in Liverpool here. And I'm like, no, you're not. You're in Belarus. Nailed it. Welcoming back. What? Welcome. Love got to do. Got to, to do with things. Lots love. Got things to do. No, no, no. Right, so put that in the musical. Put that in the musical. Ooh, Whitney Houston in the musical. Someone find us a bath. Oh, no, she died in a bath, you know. Do you know what? I didn't Hello? laugh at the Whitney Houston joke, and I don't think a lot of people did either. <laughs> Makes me not want to listen to the pod. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. Bye, e Jaiva. Don't let your cunt hit you on the door on the way out or something. <laughs> I'm very excited about playing um, the arena. Um, it's playing. just a major inconvenience, really, isn't it? Oh, the 9th no. of December, I'm meant to be in Morecambe. Are you opening Morecambe? Yeah. <laughs> opening gets closed up until then. I'm going to the circus in the day. Oh, yeah. Ah, the old I winter circus. <laughs> the circus doesn't overrun. I hope, I hope England aren't in a World Cup semi final on December the 9th. Why? Could they be? It what? will not matter in Liverpool anyway. Correct. Yeah. It's fucking, yeah. Because you're scouse. Not English, although you are English, uh, you know, officially. Um, it's amazing, fucking amazing. It's ridiculous, is what it is. I'm so excited. I can't take. I can't quite take it in. My family have obviously been very supportive of the podcast and the success we've had. Not all of them know exactly what it is or what's happening. I think that's it's very, all of our families, but it? it's very yeah. real going. We've booked the arena and they're like, oh, that auditorium theatre that you did blind date. And you're like, no, <laughs> the actual arena. An arena. We're playing that. We're the second podcast ever to play an arena after Chris Ramsey and Rosie. Is that true, yeah? <sighs> yeah. <Huh. laughs> I also, I love the level up in terms of like, what's it going to be? It's going to be an absolute spectacular. We've got rehearsals. Oh my god! I, I'm I'm looking forward to the rehearsals as much. And this is when it gets weird when they're like, obviously you want all these big set pieces, and obviously can we do loads and like, but you're gonna have to pay extra if you want like Dan flying in on a zip wire. You're like, what? The it's gonna be a fucking show. The promotion just, company were like, well, that's us. something that you might want to do, and you're like, no, fat men don't want to die that night. You're not gonna get on the zip wire to do what? I'm James Bond, and then me. That's my entrance. Ding, da, ding, 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 On a zip wire. <laughs> I want to come in a zip wire to open up my stand up bit. Just come in and like, dun, 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 dun. wow, fucking hell, dance, spotlights, smoke, and then just I literally open. get landed and just go, who's drinking? That'd I want to amazing. open the retractable roof and parachute in. Is it a retractable roof? Yeah. Is oh. it the Millennium Stadium Cardiff that you're thinking of? Wimbledon. Oh. Wimbledon. Oh, shit. <laughs> you thought we were playing Centre Court Wimbledon. <laughs> Uh, I mean, yeah. that's next, isn't it? The middle no. with the net on. No, not December the 9th. It's, it's, the grass will be wet. No, we'll do it the week after Wimbledon. The roof will be closed. Oh, cool, cool. Sell a lot of tickets in SW. Just believe us, by the way. Nine. It's going to be an absolute. The word extravaganza. That's what we should have called it. The have a word extravaganza. Or bonanza. Or bonanza. Anything with a Z in. Zebra. <laughs> <laughs> the have a word zebra. The have a word zoo. Um, it's going to be tremendous. We can't. We can't. We're going to slowly release what's happening as it gets put together. Um, Let us know who you'd like to see in yeah. the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, ring, ring the, the bell, comments. ring the bell. Ah, this guy he knows how to sell. Nothing's arenas. off either. Nothing's That's how you limits. sell arenas, isn't it? Yeah. Like you like and subscribe, buy an arena ticket. Yeah. Nothing's off limits. Whatever you want to happen. Could happen. No, it is off limits. I'm not getting in a zip wire. Yes, you are. Oh, I don't want to. Well, I don't care. Oh, why is it always me? I've got. We'd a all get on the zip I've wire. Got a tattoo on my bum bum. Yeah. I put one of my balls in a cursed lake. <laughs> why are you on the zip wire? I'll get on the zip wire. You do the zip wire. I'll do something Trapeze. else. Why are you making it more dangerous? Yeah. I'll ask the circus people to come. <laughs> I'm gonna drag it from the circus. Just want to double. <laughs> double up. It's got to be hard to double up as a circus act. Yeah. So, we've got a double for them. Just bounce from one gig to another. Um, shall we do some questions on stand-up? We're going to do stand-up in the first half, and then it's the full, a full podcast live show. There will be no other pod lives. 
This is it, isn't it? It all builds to this. This is the only live podcast show this year. We've got a lot of messages recently asking when we're going to do a live show outside of Liverpool, which is very, very valid and fair. I think next year, sort of towards the summer of next year, I think we'll probably do a few live dates. We know we want to need, we need to hit Glasgow, Newcastle, Dublin, Birmingham, Cardiff, and maybe London again. Um, we will try and put some live shows on outside of Liverpool next year. But the one have a weird live show this year, the only one. Uh, oh, by the way, that's not a definite as well. That we that is theoretical. Like we, that might not happen. No, that's really hard to make that work. What we do know is, if you want to see this podcast live. Like you need to go come to the arena on December One the 9th. Ticket. That's all there is this year. Yeah. Nothing else. And you're gonna have to be quick because there are I think it's eight thousand tickets at the Liverpool Arena, up to ten and a half if we open the very top tiers. And there's tr- over twelve thousand patrons now. And it's allocated, so if you want to be at the front, you need to be at the front of the fucking queue, mate. So this replaces the the Christmas live show that we did at uh, Hot Water for the last two years. There will be no live stream. It is in the room. Um it's going to be magical. Yeah, you've got... When's December? Nine months away? Eight and a half months you've got. Book your hotel now. It'll be about hotel, four quid. Travel, whatever you need to do. We're going to do stand-up uh, to our fans in, a, in an arena. That's the other bit that I'm forgetting. Like, I'm going, ah, oh, cool. We As a podcast, we get to do the arena. In that first half, that's the biggest moment of my career by fucking miles. Join the club. Jesus Christ. <laughs> he hasn't done many arenas. No. 11 so far. Only 11. <laughs> Just the Isle of Man. You booked the Isle of Man arena. Yeah. yeah. We'll sell it, lad. Paul Smith did that in four minutes. What are you about it? You long tail. Do you know... From before. Uh, he hasn't actually got in touch with me, so I'm going to lie. You were the fastest ever um, sale for the comedy station for their tour shows. You sold, the, you sold it out the fastest ever they've ever done. Nice. Ryan told me and he's going to send me something, but he hasn't sent me at all. Rowie bags of tickets. That's how you know. Sold. Yes. Not available. <laughs> Rowie bag- in the Isle of Man. Rowie, Rowie bags of tickets available. <laughs> in the Isle of Man. <laughs> Going over the water. Matt Smith. Should we do some questions? Yeah. Stand up, stand up question. Smithy got in touch. Oh, Smith. Smith-o. Yeah. Who's Matt Smith? He hosts um, one football show. shows and the one show. He hosts right. the one show. Good in here. It is actually him as well. I've spoke to him. And I'm not even messing. Saw Adam at the stand in Edinburgh. It was my first time in an honest-to-goodness comedy club, and I was quite surprised at how cosy it was. Some of the audience right in front of the stage, basically at Adam's feet. (laughs) Do you guys like this? The audience within touching distance, or do you prefer a little buffer zone between the performance area and the crowd like Paul had at the Tivoli? Or is it one of those things where it depends on the gig, the crowd, the buzz on the night, ETC? Dan, can't wait to travel down to Glasgow in October to come and see you on tour. Keep up all the good work. That's from Maffers. Oh, it's Maffers, a.k.a. Matt Smith. Matt Smith. The closer, the better. I would like to brush people with my cock as I turn on the stage. Wow. And that's why you you gig with your dick out. <laughs> and that's not, you know, like, Bert Kreischer gets his top off. I don't know if you you already know this. Spoiler alert, if you've been to Adam's tour, he he's naked from the waist down. Yeah. Like a toddler on a beach. Got socks and shoes on, though. Like a reverse Winnie the Pooh. Yeah, because he needs he needs purchase. He does. Imagine if he turned to like, oh, I'm doing a joke. <laughs> like, a like a reverse Winnie the Pooh. Oh, yeah, because yeah. he's only got a top on. That's, no, that'd no, be the same. Like a Winnie the Pooh. Pooh. Like a Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> <laughs> Winnie the Pooh would have kecks on and no top. <laughs> like, a, like a scouse Winnie the Pooh. Exactly like Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> I, I know, we'll cut that out. <laughs> like Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Rowie the Pooh. With his cock out. I've, I've watched a different Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> Has he got his cock out? No, he's got a mound. I've uh. seen Winnie the Pooh porn. <laughs> You've seen Winnie the Pooh porn? I've seen Winnie fucking piglet. Winnie's a, bu- Winnie's a girl. What? Winnie is a girl. Winnie is not a girl. What are you on about? Winnie the Pooh? Winnie the Pooh. is a boy. Are you sure? To be honest, he's not anything. He's the, They are just like... Oh, it's a boy. Why is it called Winnie then, the daft cunt? Because it's short for Winston. Oh, no, you're thinking of Winnie Mandela. (laughs) It's Willie, isn't it? It's short for Winston. It's Winston the Pooh. (laughs) Winston the Pooh. Named after Winston Churchill. You're having a laugh. Um, So, Winnie the Pooh is actually a girl. Named after a female black bear named Winnie. It's not true. 
Yeah, I've seen his dick on Pornhub. <laughs> Winnie the Pooh's a girl. I fucking knew it. She is a girl and she's from Canada, not England. Suck it. Winnie, Winnie the Pooh's a boy. Bollocks. In, in all bollocks. Of the... Bollocks. Winnie the Pooh's a girl. Winnie the Pooh's a girl. It says all over the internet Winnie the Pooh's a girl. Like. What's wrong? You've seen his cock. I've seen Winnie the Pooh's cock. What does it look so you like? can't tell me it's a girl. You know, you've seen another... Unless it's someone with a cock who identifies as a girl, which is fine. Why were you watching Winnie the Pooh porn? Uh, it came up. Why, well, you're not going to not click on that. Ungover. Was he walloping someone? Piglet? Oh, that's got to be illegal. <laughs> I thought so as well. You fuck him with cartoons. He loves them. <laughs> uh, good question. Thanks for that. Enjoyed that. <laughs> we're not in the mood for serious questions. Uh, Robson Park says, out of these careers, which do you think would be the best? Uh, which do you think you'd all be best at? So Dan, Adam, Sensei, Finton, Steve... Harry's not here. You only get one job each. F1 driver, bricklayer, <laughs> astronaut, translator for North Korea. But is that just Korea, though? They don't have a separate language, do they? No, it's the same. It's Korean. That's, I know languages. They probably have some colloquialisms. Yeah. 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 I do, they don't say They're Googly. Like, yeah, I'm from North Korea, Lake. <laughs> I fucking hate South Korea. <laughs> and all the South Koreans are like, I fucking love Seoul. It's no tea. <laughs> And fucking commie cunts, get out of it. No, but they wouldn't say Google it in North Korea, would they? What? Because they don't have Google. They don't have anything. There you go. So South Korea has they have whiteboards. Whiteboard What's that in Google? They're just like, What's the capital of Taiwan? Fucking whiteboard it. <laughs> just fucking work it out. <laughs> Bus boy or dog groomer. So you've got to pick one job you think you'd be amazing at. F1 driver, you'd be hilarious in F1 driver. Just you screaming obscenities at everyone that you drove around. <laughs> that would be phenomenal. Bricklayer. Fingers here. You could fucking build the top of the house on the ground floor. Astronaut. Trans. I think Carl would be a good astronaut. Transla when they say translator, is, am I just there to translate the language or am I there to like negotiate peace? There is peace, isn't there? Feels like they might kick off. Right. In North Korea. Do you know something about a war that's happening? Did you not see North Korea re reveal their nuclear weapon the other day? It was like a Thunderbirds thing. I think that's more of just a, a... That's like when you show your blade. You've not actually stabbed anyone yet. Yeah, he hasn't, yeah, he hasn't fired a nuke. I'll give you that. Thank you. I'll 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 well, I will take it. <laughs> was that not making you nervous, though? If I had a knife now and I was like, have a look at that, would you be like, well, he hasn't stabbed anyone? Yeah, I You'd think be worried that I've got a knife, wouldn't you? Oh, you're right, you're right, yeah. but I'm not South Korea! Yeah. I'm here. All safe. Do you want me to be an astronaut so I fuck off to the moon? I don't know. Just thinking who's got the... Oh, fucking hell. You'll never make an astronaut. I've seen you... I've heard you breathing while yeah. editing. Yeah. Ten. Nine. <laughs> <laughs> you can't breathe in a, in a spaceship. It's against the law. Right. <laughs> okay. Dog groomer. What do you want? Pick a job. Pick a job. Um, out of them, I I think what what one I'd be best at? Probably F one driver. <laughs> <laughs> Shock, <laughs> but that's not necessarily the one I'd want to do. Right. Dog grooming's quite fun. Is it? Yeah, giving dogs haircuts and that. Have you done it? Haircuts? No, but it looks it. Have you never? You've had loads of dogs all day and be like, yeah. Yeah, you, Buster. I think you've been a fucking Afro kid. Two scissors. <laughs> Two scissors at the same time. Buster. Fucking hell. I would be nervous dropping my dog. The family dog. We all love fucking little Benji. Mm -hmm. And then Adam comes with the Edward scissor hands. Yeah, like fucking it's like two members of staff. <laughs> Give it an afro. <laughs> fucking hell. I'd circumcise your dog. <laughs> <laughs> and it's dead. <laughs> Shit. What are you picking, Dan? Um, Why don't you give it a Labrador on my weekend? Be great, that. I can't disagree. <laughs> Translator for North Korea feels like I might not be good at that just because I can't speak Korean. Yeah. So I think you when I give it a first go, tried... You'd pick it up. I don't know if... Hang on, they wouldn't know though because they don't speak it. You could just make it up. Yeah, so you're at the UN or somewhere... <laughs> Yeah. And like they've just flashed their big nuclear weapon. It's an important translator that. Yeah. You're in your little booth and they're all in the headphones. So he starts speaking Korean. Yeah. And you I just have, gotta... and I have to blag it and be like, Oh yeah, he's 
He's a madman. He's just fucking been pulled over by the fucking pigs. No, you're... He says, he says go on, mate. Stab me, lad. Lad, stab me. Stab me, lad. That's what he said. And they're going, oh, wow, fuck. Fucking hell. Oh, so the translator for North Korea is like, you're at the UN and Kim Jong, whatever his name is, is fucking talking all fucking ham and that. And you've got to let yeah. everyone know what he's saying. Yeah. But you don't have to translate back to him. Right, okay. Oh, now it's easier. Then. Now it's easier, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's easier. You don't need to speak Korean. You just make it up. Yeah. All you're, you need you're to just... learn, all you need to learn in Korean is hello and I love you, lad. Because then he's Sam, isn't he? Because he just wants everyone to love him. So you were like, you're just like, what's it all? And you're like, <laughs> oh, God, it was here. just a matter of time before right? someone tried it. Oh, duh. Love you, lad. That's how I love you, lad, in Korea. Korean, 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 Korean. H I J K. Keep talking. Yeah, go on. He's got Korean. Hello. Uh, hello, hello in Korean. <laughs> is go for that, Adam. Uh, player. That is pretty much what I said before. <laughs> and you're saying, oh. and you're saying, oh. that's when you're pissed. Hello, and you're saying, oh. and, and I love, I love you, lad. You is... No, I love you, lad. Oh, I love you, lad. Oh. <laughs> Let's just go with I love you. I'm sorry. Anya say oh, hang on. Put Anya. lad back on the end of that. <laughs> Fucking lad's a mouthful, isn't it? <laughs> so, hang on. So I love you is... I know, say, yeah. And I love you, lad, is... So just put hello. <laughs> just put hello, I love you. Just put hello, I love you. Oh, yeah. Anya so, young so that's what Anyong you're going to so That's all you're going to say back Anyong to Salange. Kim Jong Un. Is like what and what did they say? And you're like, "Hello, I love you." No, it's nice. no. That's Le- how you de-escalate. No, you're not understanding what I'm saying. So when I get to the UN and they go, "Kim lad, this is your translator," right? <laughs> He's going to be like, <laughs> "Kim lad, is this it, guy? Is even- the guy who seats everyone at the UN <laughs> is from Toxteth. <laughs> lad, hey Kim, no fucking about it." Get the fucking headphones on. <laughs> Sit down. So, like, this you translate it. Kim's going to be like, does he even speak Korean? I need some evidence. And I'll just go, and he'll be like, oh, nice one. Yeah. And then he'll start speaking Korean. I can just translate. And I can literally calm everything nice and down, can't I? He's like, oh, no, 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 no. He's like, and you're just like, yeah, everything sounds. Just chill out. Not going to shoot no one. I'll smash everyone's head in. I'll smash everyone's head in. That doesn't that, sound like a threat, does it? No. That's yeah, like because, a question. Because I don't think Google Translate has an audio function for threatening people, innit? <laughs> Come on, Google. <laughs> Work it and out. You, you could, like, he's like, yeah, I want to smash everyone's head in the West. And he's like, Adam's like, yeah, it's laughing. Sweet, no problem. Love you all. Have a good one. Let's yeah. all be friends. Yeah. Let's just be friends. Everyone in the Ain't UN's like, fight about it. it's really weird. Kim Jong-un's just said, buy your tickets for Have a Word Live at the <laughs> Liverpool Arena. Wow. Apparently they've just hit 12,000 patrons. Wow. Do you know what's really funny? Do you know a what, lid. Do you know when we teased the arena announcement and like, oh, the announcement's coming? So many people were guessing what it is and two people messaged me, just two, saying, is it that you're performing at the Echo Arena? And I said no to both of them because it's not called that anymore. The MS Bank. The MS Bank Arena. So <laughs> up your bollocks. Good chat to everyone who tweeted at it going, is it probably a December live show at the arena? And I, I nearly liked it and then thought, nah, cool, keeping it. The amount of people who were wildly inaccurate with it were like, oh my God, it's going to be a lock in. That would be the biggest announcement in Havaway in history. In really. December. We're doing a lock in. Is Dan finally transitioning? Maybe. Um, Ian Lewis says, assuming the modern Olympics were done nude, like the ancient Olympics, which would which would be the worst discipline to watch? And that can include the Winter Olympics. That's ridiculous. You can't do the Winter Olympics naked. Pommel horse. The the pommel horse? Yep. <sighs> the you've javelin. Got, if you've got big dangly bollocks, the pommel horse is a real problem. You're popping it? them. Pole vault. You're seeing up the bum all there, aren't you? Alder ting. What's he saying? Javelin? Yeah, because then you've got such a direct comparison between the size of your javelin and the size of your cock. <laughs> yeah. That's what everyone's thinking as you're throwing a massive spear 80 metres in the air like, fucking hell, that, that javelin was bigger than his dick. <laughs> He's just broken the world record. Couldn't give a shit. <laughs> Little non-javelin dick fucking weirdo. The, the pommel horse, 
yeah. would honestly, it, there'd be an empty stadium for it. Because <laughs> you are just going, Gooch, bummel, bummel, Gooch, <laughs> Gooch, bummel, bummel. It's like, how many times can you flash your Why arsehole you and Gooch? Why you it? <laughs> Gooch, bummel. That's, that's the coach. <laughs> gooch, bummel, bummel, Gooch, 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 cock, 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 balls, cock, cock, balls, bummel, Gooch. Adam's Mars Christmas. Did you just try and make the Olympics into a fucking musical? <laughs> gooch, gooch, bum all, gooch, gooch, bum hop. Tell me you wouldn't watch that. The Olympics, the musical? Yeah. Shoot me in both of my eyes. What else is there? Um, um, pummel horse. Or oh, the Winter Olympics if you had to be naked. The luge. Oh my God. The luge. 100 mile an hour cock. The toboggan run. My dick would be so far up inside me, it would be fine. It would be already in as soon as I like as I was getting on the luge. My dick would be like, oh, "No, thank you, bye bye." I'll see down. you in April, motherfucker. Speed skating would be good as well. Speed speed skating, yeah. Imagine with if you his fell dick? and you oh, cut my. someone's cock off at the end of your fucking blade. He's fucking flapping on the. <laughs> oh, and the and the um. <laughs> That'd be the best. The curling you, you could just, just do it with Adam's dick. <laughs> do the cleaners have to have it out though? Cleaners, yeah, cleaners aren't they? <laughs> just competitive mopping. That's all they're doing. Yeah. Like, when the Olympics are not on, those people mop floors for a living. What? Little hoover comes. You still love working on a bar and mopping at the end of the night. <laughs> Could have been a great hurl. I enjoy a mop. At the end of the night, yeah. when you had some, like, soft arts, like... Uh, it's always the last shit. job. I was like... Well. Get. <laughs> Loved yeah. it. That ladies mop. Went fast. But yeah, I could have made a great... Kaelin's the best. Naked Kaelin. We used to all hate mopping in the bar. It used to be whoever made the least amount of tips had to mop. Because it's the I last job, isn't it? It's only one person doing it. Everyone else finishes. That's yeah. why. Everyone else finishes and sat down with a pint. Yeah. <laughs> Loved it. No, I was never doing it. Never working on my own. Can't remember working on my own. Just like, I like, I like to be done properly. But it's transferable skills. What's the best sport naked that would help? Like, what's, what, what, what would being naked help most? I mean, wrestling, because if you were homophobic, you're out, aren't you? So basically, it's just bisexual people fucking nailing it, like, go on, grip me. Like, and also, whoa, 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 whoa. And also, you could get a hard on and use to fucking knock them out. If you've got a big enough dick. In wrestling. Yeah. The old dick knockout. Like the spinning elbow, it's a spinning cock. It's a disqualification. Says who? The cock. Stri- the rules of wrestling. You're not allowed to strike. Oh, I didn't know that. Right then. Well, it's because it's well, wrestling, isn't it? You choke them out with your dick. You wrap your dick around the neck and just rear naked choke with your cock. Is there is there chokes in wrestling? Is that Brings a whole new meaning to rear naked choke. Because you're behind them naked choking them with your cock. Thanks for the <laughs> VAR on that joke. <laughs> Tennis would be funny as well. What? All sports would be better naked. Just no. saying. They'd all be worse. Do you reckon? Yeah. I'm glad that people wear clothes. Darts, I think, would be pretty oh. stressful. Oh, oh Phil Taylor with his ass out. <laughs> everyone in the alley pally like, <laughs> na, 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 na. <laughs> oh. I don't think I ever want to pitch a Raymond Van Barrel's asshole. Who? Who? <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a rerun on that one. Oh, Take two. <laughs> hey. Ray- I don't think oh, I ever want to pitch uh, Raymond Van Barnavel. <laughs> Raymond Van Barnavel. Oh, there you go. Asshole. Don't you have to. Fuck it up. <laughs> but I am now. Oh. Imagine the snooker. Imagine yeah, like trying to get What about Raymond Van der Hunder Hunder? And your legs on the table. What? Oh my god, yeah. Have a gooch out. Oh, that'd be a and the fellow, the fellow with the how, gloves. How much do you lean over in snooker? That's a that's a real arch of the back. There's isn't no it? rest. The rest's broke. You got to lean over for a long red. You got to put your cock in the pocket. <laughs> Can we weigh that? The cock that's what they call it. And the what man with the gloves comes over and polishes your bollocks while you're doing it. What about UFC naked? They basically, are naked. I would tune in to see Francis and Garner fight. Both or if they them. change the rules of snooker, do you know, like when in, in when you've snookered someone in snooker and they fail to hit a red and they have to put the ball back right where it was. Imagine if they change it so you have to put your cock in exactly where it was as well. <laughs> you got a little fellow with a glove on just moving <laughs> millimeter by millimeter. Your cock, hang on. No, they do that, don't they? They do that to there. get the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, there's a pew about a place. <laughs> oh, imagine if like um, like to win, like to have your luge, like bare ass. Mm. Put your bollocks over the cushion and someone smacks the white at it. Oh, why would you say that? Genuinely just gave me a pain in my left That's not snooker. That's just that's just BDSM, isn't it? Yeah, we'll mix them. Yeah. 
You know, I bet you're into some fucking dirty stuff, you. Oh, when I go to snook at all, mate. Take take Seneca down the fucking pool hall. Booked it out. Happy birthday. American pool as well. Tables are bigger. Oh, uh, bigger balls as well, you yeah. dirtbag. Oh, yes. Pop it like it's hot. What would the UFC be like naked? <laughs> Anyone? Similar to wrestling, I think. I'd like to go and see Francis Ngannou. I don't know about you. <laughs> Pews and penis. He's never probably got a big willy, on he? Would you be allowed to wear the gloves? Oh, I suppose not. You're naked, aren't you? Yeah. Some of the bare knuckle... I see a lot of bare knuckle boxing videos come up and I'm like, aye, how popular is that getting? Is that really just... I'm just seeing it on the internet. Yeah, you're just But it's more... It. it is... Like, it looks really well produced. Like It's, it's just a, a scrap, isn't it? Yeah, but it's no, all, but it's... it's now, a, their production values are way yeah, but not in countries... It's like... That's in, like, Russia and stuff. That's not in, like... No. In the UK? No. Yeah. I think it's... It's honestly getting more... I think it's America. Really, yeah. Rough and Rowdy, is that one? It's a porno, though. Bare knuckle boxing. Yeah. Um, yeah, do you look? Do you look? BKFC? Jesus Christ. Ah, that's not for me, that. Also known as Fisty Cuffs. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, not, it's not what they're branding it as, though, is it? Bare knuckle fighting championship. <laughs> AKA that's really funny. Fisty Cuffs. Or illegal boxing. Classical puglism. Pugilism. Sorry, I'm Susie a, cunt. I'm a pugilier. Oh, come on, Dan, do the voice. <laughs> come on. I just love puglism. <laughs> <laughs> Pug life, motherfucker. Uh, Dan, do the voice. Been punched so many times. Do the voice. Of what? Chris Eubank saying I'm a pugilier. I can't do it. You've done it before. Have I? Pugilier. Is that mini Mike Tyson? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a pugilier. Breathe it. You have done it before. You've done it on the pod. I'm a pugilier. Did Mike talking. Tyson and Chris Eubank always have their lisps, or has that been fucking knocked into them? Um, let me just did check. Chris Eubank come out of the fucking womb being like, Mother, I want some Cheerios. By the way, <laughs> by the way, I seen a tweet last night. <laughs> there are literally some times in the pub where I'm like, I don't know what, what you want. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I don't know what you want. I seen a tweet last night that really made me laugh. You know, just a stupid joke. So male honeybees will often die immediately after having sex. So their life cycle is literally honey, nut, cheerio. And honestly, I'll have to have about 10 minutes. That's good, though. <laughs> Never a good sign when you do a joke and Carl goes, It's good, though. <laughs> Good. That's like on Joe Rogan when he goes, that's hilarious. No, that's like, what You've not laughed, Joe. <laughs> I do it at his shows. If he does a joke that I've not heard before, I go, yeah, that's good. That's literally my reaction. Techers. Techers. Yeah. Yeah, because you know the game. I mean, Adam got a massage last night, you know. Oh, we did. I definitely accidentally ticked Brazilian Jiu Jitsu for the first half. I thought I booked a full body massage. <laughs> Turned out I booked half Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, half massage. She beat the shit out of me and then healed me. <laughs> she went hard and then softened up. Yeah. Did she do your glutes? Huh? Is no. that your bum? Oh, she did, yeah. She had a good little rummage in my ass. Like, on the yeah. glutes? Yeah. yeah. She Stop. was scouse as fuck as well, and she was, like, talking oh. to me. I've never had a... a scouse massage? Yeah, same. What a lad. She oh. went to me, she went, I'm not even messing, she went, have you been working out? And I went, no, she went, have you been in the gym? I went, not today. And she went, your legs are solid. Yeah. My mum said to me, do you want to fuck me? <laughs> Now and I was like, I can't. I'm tired. She's like, no, but like, fuck me. Do you want to fuck me? I, you're fit, you. And I was like, <laughs> mine actually happened, by the way. <laughs> I don't know if it's did. Oh, it, did you not? He had his Lancaster holiday in. <laughs> do you know what I struggle with massage? How do you when you have an imagination wank? How how many people are going? Adam, Adam, I love you, Adam. You're the best person ever, and I'd love to suck your big dick. La la la, best cock ever. <laughs> Like, is is there any like women with the tits out? And you fuck in your imagination. Is there just a plane flying over with the thing behind going? Adam is amazing. My imagination He's got a great ranks dick. are very intimate and subtle. To be honest with you, they what, they don't sound like they would be. No, but they are though. It's just really? me and one woman in a closed bedroom. Like there's no one else in the world. <laughs> closed oh. bedroom. I I never fuck with an open door. <laughs> but the house is empty. Just close very the door. Passionate my imagination fantasies. Curtains closed. Every it's just. Really Night, low light. Night, nighttime. And she's like just 
her head's in here and we're just really slow fucking. You're choking her out? Her head's in here. So she's on top <laughs> of me. You're like there were wind in a baby. Like, <laughs> it looks yeah, like she's choking young. her out. She's young. It's a baby goat. That's disgusting. <laughs> no, it's just a woman. And she's what are you doing? What, what are you, are you doing? Out? All right, audio listeners, why, where are you at? You need to come and see this. Yeah, I've just got a woman. She's got a woman here. I've got a tiny little woman. And I'm like, you're a little midget woman. And the door is closed, so I can't fucking step on you as you run out onto the landing. You're my little magic lady woman. You're only eight inches smaller than me, dick. <coughs> You know what I mean? No, I don't. Oh, let me paint you a bitch in that. Terrible. It's a rear naked choke. So she's on top of me. Yeah. And her body's here. And her head. <laughs> Big shoulders, this girl. Just, <laughs> she's here. And she's been doing fucking upper body. Lovely V. She's Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> and I'm like, come here, love. I'm going to make you miniature with my magic wank fantasy mind. And now you're little Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, I've killed you because you were smaller than my dick. La, 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 la. Adam's wank. <coughs> You're making it sound silly. You're right. She nestles her head on me neck and we just slow fuck. <laughs> <laughs> slow fuck. <laughs> oh, erotic fiction. <laughs> Is the door closed? <laughs> Close the door. We slow fuck, and then at one point, we look out the window and the sun's coming up. And we're like, wow, we've been going all night. Slow fucking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the fucking, what a stupid bit. And the fucking wank fantasy. You actually come and I, <laughs> and I keep having the fantasy. <laughs> no one in the history of wank fantasies has ever just gone, need to tie this one off. <laughs> Let's close this one down. No, hey, I look. Need, that's look, not true. I need look, closure on all look, my wank fantasies. Look, you've, you've jizzed. You've not even. <laughs> there's still jizz on your belly. And you're like, look, look out the window. <laughs> We've been going all night. No, no, and no. And scene. No, no, no. That is still Jordan the fantasy. The sun comes up. I, I haven't come yet. And we're still going. And then right. she looks out, and there's a moment where we both appreciate goes, life. Oh, oh, God. I've got to get the train to work. And you're like. <laughs> Fuck so long. Within your wank fantasy, she's got to ring a boss and be like, I'm going to be late for work. And like, yeah. Yeah. You'll have to take a half day. <laughs> but luckily, you're on flexi time. <laughs> Very specific. She's like, actually, I'm out of holiday for this calendar year. <laughs> you're going to have to take a sick day. That will count as a strike against my record. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we kept fucking until there was kids going to school. Oh, that, that got weird. But sometimes when I finish... It... <laughs> oh, my God, she's getting smaller. Oh, my God. She's so small. Just blows it away. <laughs> oh, yeah. She is. Fucking Do you ben... never tie off your fantasies, though? Benjamin buttoned her. After you've finished. <laughs> no. You don't. Just, uh, so you finish and you just stop playing the movie? No, I ask her to leave in a really polite way. <laughs> Go on then. I'm just a, like, I, I've, I've, you know, I've finished. Yeah. And I'm waiting to do the clean up. Yeah. And then I'm just like, you're all right, love. Um, do you want me to walk you down? She's like, no, I'll be all right. Where are you? Let's see. On the hill. flat. Oh. Right, see you later then. See, catch you next time. <laughs> oh. When does it end? When does the wank end? <laughs> are you still wanking? Like, oh, God, no, no, yeah, no. I'm saying goodbye and being so polite. <laughs> See you then. Look after yourself. <laughs> oh, by the way, how's your brother doing? <laughs> Is he all right after his fall? <laughs> all right, we'll give him my love. <laughs> so detailed. Oh, shit, the post has come. <laughs> all bills. <laughs> the bills, you can keep them. <laughs> Very detailed, yeah. <clears throat> When you're getting a massage, I don't. Yeah. Do you give feedback? What do you mean? I always struggle to not give feedback. Give encouragement. Did she not Go. do the numbers thing? Theresa, my masseuse. <laughs> Theresa May. <laughs> <laughs> Theresa May does mine, but she's not the prime minister anymore. She's just a backbench MP. She does sports massage on the side <laughs> in Hull, in Chester. <laughs> it's <is> weird. Um, <laughs> 
I'd love if that was true. Um, <clears throat> she, she goes, if it's too, no, she, she asks, she's like, if I'm pressing too hard, just tell me. She does, it, she's like, eight is the point where if you get to eight, I'll go back to seven. Right. No, I don't mean that. And when I mean, you're like, nine, she, nine. She, no, like when you're talking to someone and you nod and you go, yeah. Or like when you go, good food and you go, oh, that's nice, that. You're lying there in silence, feel like, oh, no, it was good, that. I'm not lying there in silence. I make sort of like, oh, do you? Moaning noises and Oh, that. are you moaning? Oh. <laughs> that's illegal. That's illegal. No, it isn't. That's proper to Sean Watson. That's not allowed. <laughs> Hang on, you're, as she's rubbing you, you're going, making a oh. moaning. No, you get thrown out. Go ahead. Oh, you can say go ahead. Oh, yeah, go on, do that bit again. Go on, up a bit further. Up a bit further? Yeah. What, from here? Oh, go on, do the necky, dirty girl. She did do my neck last night. I need scalp. How good's that? Right. Scalp massage. Are you lying there in sounds really, or are you moaning? <laughs> <laughs> what? I feel like I feel like going every now and again. By the way, this is good. Do no, you, I just, do you not talk to them? No. All right, me and Teresa. I'm just giving chat. encouragement. I'm just like, go ahead. Yeah, that's a good bit. Do that again. Oh, oh, I. Oh, are you doing all that? Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Do you ever shut the fuck up? Or you, arm? You doing an arm? Ooh. I fell asleep yesterday, and I only know that because I heard myself snore and woke myself up. <laughs> Yeah, and I don't know how long I'd been asleep for. The whole place was closed down and no one was touching <laughs> it. <laughs> what year is it? <laughs> Amazing. It's just, it's just, I learned so much about you. Yeah, yeah I give a bit of like, oh, a bit less there, love, because my shoulders a bit. I don't mean that. I mean, positive encouragement, like, oh, yeah, it's good, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it very, you making it sound like it's creeping towards, like, go on. Oh, yeah. No, but I feel they like. You can't. Because you always give positive reinforcement to something you like in every facet of life, except for the massage. I'm just saying it feels a bit awkward. Oh, I do. I'm like, oh, yeah, do that again. Right? Do it again. Faster. Harder. Fuck me. Yeah. Too far. <laughs> Fuck me. Till, till you're late for work. <laughs> till the sun comes up. <laughs> I don't mind paying extra. Oh, dear. That's been fun, hasn't it? I wonder if we'll do that at the arena. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> live will. massage. Can't, can't wait. Just lost us about a thousand ticket sales. Let's have a break. Oh. Wag wag lids. Hope you're enjoying today's patron exclusive. We've got some new merch that you can see over my booby. Is this real? This is an ad, this. Oh, for the merch. For the merch that you're wearing. Get one of these ones. But when you buy it, get one that fits you. <laughs> They come in different sizes, but I would definitely maybe order one size up, unless you want to feel like it's a Tammy Girl starter bra. Haveawordpod.com is have where you get the merch com. from, and it'll save you wearing that pile of shite that you're wearing at uh, the minute. We just said, don't be doing the mean thing. Oh, you look like a fucking pedo. Get some merch, but he can't help himself. They just, but look at them. Look through the camera at the fucking scruffy twat on the other side of it. I like you. I think you look good. Fucking pathetic. But you'll look better. In Have A Word Pod merch. That's, that's what I was saying, just in a more polite way. And that's here, because Carlo put the graphic in. Haveawordpod.com, if you can't read. Get on me. Part three. Welcome back to the Have A Word. What? <laughs> just love it, I love it when you do the... Jason Manford's here! Yay! Yay! Thank you very much for coming down. Absolute gave him a chance. Pleasure. Gave him a chance. You know, said, come on, lad. We'll break you. We'll break you. <laughs> We've done a lot for Jamie Hutchinson. This is your chance, kid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, pleasure. Pleasure to do it. How are you? I'm well, actually, yeah. Just um, getting back onto this touring, trying to do the gigs. And yeah, I'm still suffering post-lockdown, I think. You know, just the mental, like, that, t that forced time off that we all had. Yeah getting back into it and getting out there. And I think, I don't know if you noticed it, when you first got back, like, people have not done been to any gigs, so they're, they're laughing on another level. But they're also feral. Oh, yeah. They are feral. There's a lot more heckling I've, I've seen. And Big it's time. like, look, I know you haven't been out for two years, but... Yeah. Just... <laughs> but it's weird, because at home, they were doing their own measures. So you'd think <laughs> they could handle the drinks. When they got back to proper measures, they'd be like, Fuck, there's nothing in that. Um, <laughs> but, like, I did, I did uh, Manchester Apollo. You know, you do the thing where you, I don't know about you, but when I'm on stage, sometimes I have a little nosy, like if things are going on, especially in the bigger venues, like arenas, people don't give a fuck. No one's, yeah. no one's sat for two hours, like giving it that. They get up, they go for a drink, you know, and you can't be giving it, where are you going? Like you can in yeah. 400. So um, 
at the at the, the Apollo, this guy, I can see a kerfuffle at the back. And I'm thinking, I'm trying to do my show, but I'm also I'm one of those people. I love, I can't fight, so I fucking love a fight. <laughs> when people are fucking fighting in the street, yeah, you want to be on the stage with a mic, oh, commentating on the fight. You know, you know when you're watching football and the, the players start fighting, and the commentator says, "We don't want to see this in the game." <laughs> I fucking do. I love it. Absolutely, <laughs> I love it because I can't fight, so I just I, I enjoy watching it. So anyway, I'm, I'm doing the show, and you know, you've got those like two parts of your brain, aren't you? Stand up. You got the show, and then you've got this sort of thing just on it. You know, yeah. waiting for someone to say something and join. And then I can just see fucking windmill arms and I can see like... Hey, you fucking... At your gig. At my gig. <laughs> if you're kicking off at a Jason Manford show, comedy is not for you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Absolute bear pit in Shrewsbury, <laughs> you know I mean? Yeah, exactly, exactly. People, you know, people have just obviously... Someone's seen me on Lorraine, someone's seen me on this Royal Variety show and they don't get on those people. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> Turf war. <laughs> but ain't a twat. You fucking say what I'm already. <laughs> <laughs> so I can see it's going off at the back. And the security at the Apollo, they don't fuck about. You know, they used to like mosh pits and all that. So this guy, apparently, afterwards, I, I just see the doors open. And afterwards, I go to head of security. I said, I said, what? Because I'm so nosy. I'm like, what happened? Then at the thing. He said, oh, this bloke was on his phone, actually on his phone, making a phone call, not just like a <laughs> cheeky text, actually giving it, yeah, yeah, I'm on with Jason Manford. <laughs> and he goes, can you put, turn your phone off? And he goes, fuck off, to the security. And they, they don't give you a second chance at the Apollo. It's just like four of them moving, pincer movement. He's out the door, gone. Shoes left. Like, he's actually out of his shoes. And he's out the door. And then he said, but he was scared because then there was a moment where the, the wife got up, she picked his shoes up, and she come sort of little sulphur head on her. You know, she's sort of like wandering over that. And she goes, uh, and he thought, oh, she's going to thump me here. You know, head of security, like eight foot. And she's like this big, I'm going to get thumped by this woman. And as she comes over, she goes, we never got to see the end of Michael McIntyre either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your partner is not made for live comedy, not, not love. In it, Ed, that's a problem with the Apollo as well. Yeah, she's exactly. like, twice we've been here and twice we've been kicked out. <laughs> and it's nothing to do with our behaviour. <laughs> Tell you what I've noticed. I had this uh, at all three shows in London at the weekend. Is I think people who haven't been out for a while have uh, lost the concept of rhetorical performance. So the way I present a lot of my stand-up is I'm posing a question, but just in case you're coming to one of the tour shows, I've written the answers. Yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> like, yeah. I've, I've, trust me, I know what they are. I know where I'm going with it. Yeah. I know what both answers to the question are. It's not the awkward silence if you don't join in. <laughs> but people are like, I know. I know. What <laughs> Hands up. <laughs> Someone, Hands up. Pick me. Adam. <sighs> Some woman put her hand up in the middle of the show and said, can I get a photo with you after the show? And I was like, uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah. but That's bad dum dum that. <laughs> but not. Like it's a weird time to bring it up. I have the I what I have in my shows is I think because I'm quite friendly and nice bloke, I guess, you know, and I've that sort of I'm mean, not in real life, but you know, on stage. <laughs> um is that people forget that we're not actually friends in real life. And so oh, yeah. I have the same thing where I'll say things and I'll just hear someone go, He does that <laughs> He does that all the time. I'm, yeah, I know, it's an observation. <laughs> But it's lovely in a way, you know. Yeah, <laughs> I agree in your head. Yeah, like, yeah, that's good. Yeah. This woman three times answered a question that she assumed I was asking. Oh god, not to uh, uh, an audience of four hundred people. She's like, yeah. he's talking to me. Yeah. I'm here. I, I know the answer, so I should help him out. This is a massive minority of people, especially with our pod as well, because we're talking about stand up and yeah. people are constantly emailing, going, "Are oh, you getting me into comedy more and more, and especially club comedy and mm. like." Not only do most of our lot know what's going on, like we've also let them know what we prefer and anything. I think they're like getting yeah. it even more. Well, it's just that minority who are like, yeah. I don't care about any of that. I like Adam. Adam! Yeah. You're like, no. I love that moment. Like I did last night at the, at the Apollo, actually, where I don't know about you, but I, nine times out of 10, if somebody heckles like, like aggressive loud, I, most of the time, I think maybe because I'm a dad now, I'm able just to carry on talking. <laughs> irrespective of what noise is going on around me. But every so often, if the timing's right, you know, there's nothing you can do, you've got to react. But I do that thing where you, you know, you go, sorry, what was that? And then they have to do it a second time. That's my favourite because they've built up that first one. Like last night, somebody shouted out, I was, I was talking about underfloor heating. 
Uh, it just came oh, up. Oh, fuming. Came fuming. Up in I mean, the Lorraine Kelly fans all I mean, boot right <laughs> off about that. Classic. It's not even part of me set. It just popped into me. I thought, this is this, I've got something funny about this. Basically, we've got cats during lockdown and they're indoor cats. So we've got this problem with underfloor heating, which is because we've got a box of cat so, shit in the corner of the kitchen. Sorry, can I? Can we just what? reverse Please the truck just for a second? No, whatever you want. You've got indoor cats. Oh, mate. Have you oh, ever not allowed outdoors? Our cat's pretty much indoors. He goes in the garden and then comes back. He doesn't yeah. wander the street. These, these, are, these aren't rescue cats, are they? These no, are like no. nice cats. Yeah, you don't oh, want yeah, them yeah, outside. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah they, this, my wife Shoot was like, cats. I wanted a dog. Wife wanted a cat. So you know, compromised. Got Indoor two cats. cats. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> she, um, she was like, oh, they're always inside. They never go out. But obviously now we've got a box of cat shit in the corner of the kitchen all of the time, and we've got this underfloor heating that you can't turn on because obviously you've got a slowly simmering cat poo. Just in the oh. corner. So it's a real Jason, first world problem. I think with the, the <laughs> working class fan base you've amassed, yeah. it might be quite hard to get sympathy from your audience to be like, surprised. me underfloor heating's making me out smell like shite. <laughs> Mate, middle of, middle of winter, get <laughs> your fucking show cats in the garden. The first time they're like, oh my God, what's this? It's a bloody nightmare. It's freezing and windy. <laughs> Meow. Get them out. Do them good. Well, I might start doing that. Yeah, I'll say you told me. <laughs> Sorry, love. I love that. Just the cat's been run over. It's Dan Nightingale's fault. <laughs> Are they that pricey? They're like, what's this coming towards me? Ow! Do you ever take them for a walk? I've seen no, people walk on their cats. No, that's weird. Serica wants to walk to lose. Our what? Cat. Serica wants to walk our cat. No, I think it looks weird. I don't think cats look like they like it either. No, they don't want to be walked. No. They want to go and lie down where you're not. Yeah. At all times. Yeah, totally. Cats um, ate us, don't they? Cats yeah. are like inconvenienced by humans. It's a cat's world and we're in the way. These cats love him. They're like, Jason, <laughs> the heating's too high. <laughs> Turn it down. <laughs> Another cushion, Jason. <laughs> That's exactly what like. Well, literally just people who feed them. That's it. What? We just we feed them and then they go and do their isn't own thing. Isn't there like an old, I don't know if it's a, a myth or whatever, but isn't there a thing where they say, if, like, if you died in your house, a dog would lie down next to you and die? Alongside you, just out of solidarity of its owner. Whereas a cat would eat your face. Yeah. Socrates, you said that. Is it? I yeah. thought so, yeah. Socrates. Right, right, right. Cat will yeah. sell your belongings. Yeah, exactly. And then go and put the eating on itself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and turn up. The coroner turns up. The cat's like, fucking hell, terrible. Um, <laughs> 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 it was like that when I found a mate not to do it with me. <laughs> Yeah, I live it. He was eating his My face. house now, mate. I his ate face his face now. after he died. <laughs> <laughs> it was after the event. It you wasn't mean Jimmy face No Face? Yeah. <laughs> we've um, been discussing in the first half of today's show, uh, we've booked an arena show. Yeah. And it's nice to have you in on the day we've done that because you are and have been for a while mm. an arena comic. What is your oh, yeah. advice on that? Because it's a big old space to fill with and you've got to fill it somehow. It is a big space. Um... There's a certain like demographic of people who arenas are a, like switch off. They're like not, but they're a, they're older. They're basically older than me, sort of forty yeah, yeah. plus. You know, they're yeah. a bit like it's not part. It was what how they grew up. Nobody yeah. went to an arena when when we were kids, but now they're just part of. That's just what you go and what you go and see do. Stuff what you in. Go and see stuff in, yeah. So they are part part of it. I think my my tip is to it, the way it's different to a theatre show. I personally, I think, is that your theatre show starts at seven thirty or whatever, 8 o'clock, and then you come on, you do your bit, then there's a break, then you come and do your second half. Whereas an arena show starts when they turn up. So at 6 o'clock or 6.30, or whatever it is they're starting to turn up. Like I have, when I do the arena, I have like a, de like a wedding DJ or whatever, just doing requests and stuff like that in the room. And, and then we go into a sort of, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. you can have this. Danny Bongo. Yeah, you go into that, go into, um, you know, then the sort of start of the show starts, Then there's, and even in the interval, the DJ stays on. Is like, that just because so there's so many people? It's too much on to switch it on and off. Yeah, because when, we, when we're at the theatre, they're always like, can't, we're just going to have to hold it back because there's like 110 people at the bar. Yeah, no, yeah. I suppose in the arena when they're like, there's 1,400 people at <laughs> yeah. the bar. And they, will, and they will still be in the bar, even when you start your gig, because some people are coming out, it's like an event that's on you know, just sort of there, and they're also there, and that's fine. It's, an, you know. it's like an indoor festival. The size of it mm. has got that vibe, hasn't yeah, it? it's like, massive. Right. But it's not, it's it's kind of weird. I mean, I've, I don't know if, uh, if you count on heckles or people joining in and stuff like that, but um, that's gone. <laughs> that won't be happening. <laughs> you know, so if you're like, anyone done this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my car's parked closer than where you're sat. Yeah. Well, we're going to get Stay to, uh, to to be our show manager for the night. And he's going to be running around the arena with a microphone. Oh, like that fun. woman right up at the back, Stay. Yeah. He's a scooter. Yeah, top tier. <laughs> <laughs> top tier. 
<laughs> 65,000 steps. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah, when you get there, he's like, I forgot. <laughs> do you have to slow it down? Do you have to play it bigger? What do you do? Yeah, there's, there's an element of that, but you just work it. You know, you've been doing it so long, you, you, you can play any room. So you, you work it out straight away once you're in there. But I think with, ed- with anything, certainly when it comes to theatres, anything longer than your 20-minute club set... It's long form comedy, you know. It's 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 putting a pause in and a break in. And for me, I always sit like when someone comes on to support uh, when I'm on tour, I say, and the, and it's the first time they've done it. I go, don't don't rush it. You're not doing a club set here. No one's going to interrupt you in a in a gap or a silence yeah. and call you, you know, call you twat or whatever. It's not going to happen. Uh, so just take your time, you know. So, but you, you know, you'll you'll be fine. You're fucking. We you, got a you question in the first section mm. uh, from a guy who's getting in, like I said, getting into stand up because of us. And went to see Adam at the stand in Edinburgh, which is one of the more intimate oh, yeah, comedy lovely. clubs, isn't it? And yeah. they, everyone was right under the nose of Adam, and, the, and that's how it is at the stand. Mm. Right now, if I ask you tonight, let's just book a gig, where is your absolute favourite gig? Is there a type of gig, that, or mm. is there a sp- specific gig? Do you love the big rooms because you get to show showboat, or is there a particular type of small room that just does it for so, you? So, just before you answer on this, mm. I love this question. I sort of... The way I, I ask that question to comics who can sort of sell tickets to any sort of size is where do you think you are at your peak? Yeah. For example, Dave Chappelle says his peak is 200. Right. He's like, in front of 200 people, I'm at my best. He's like, I can do the arenas. Yeah, yeah, 10, yeah. 10, 20,000 people sometimes in the big states in America. But he feels he's at his absolute best as a comic in an improv full of 200 people. Right, wow. So what would you say What's is your, your happy place? Optimum? I I mean I obviously I was at Apollo last night and they said you know being in your hometown and just the energy that sort of yeah. creates. And what's know, that about 2000? Two, two and a half thousand I think which is so that's good. And and those venues are nice because they they're intimate even though they're massive. Yeah. They've designed in such a way that they just feel like you know you'll find it tonight you know you just find that sort of moment where they just they're just there you know with you and the, and the sides come right here and stuff. I quite like as much as I like playing the big towns and the Palladium's like that actually in, L- in London. London Palladium's very well designed in that. And it's on three floors, four floors in fact. But they just, they're just here. Is it know? the old Victorian style of yeah. like, yeah? I think it's like like just, more like a wall rather than raking back. Yes, it's like yeah. they're in one. And the sound is just, you know, the, the sound's great. There, you can feel them sort of. They're so close to you, you know. Um, and also, there's an event feel to those venues yeah. you know if you're going to the you know the palladium or the apollo it yeah. feels like a, a moment you know the manchester apollo i've done only ever done it once before with bill bear and it was electric yeah. and i remember watching him that night going he'll be good that he hasn't filmed this one yeah because yeah, it was yeah. that good and right. manchester as much as and i remember in some of your early stand-up um you talked about sort of the rivalry between manchester and liverpool and obviously yeah. i have to touch on it every now and then in manchester mm. for there to be a rivalry between manchester and liverpool other than Liverpool, maybe Newcastle and Glasgow, I think Manchester's probably my favourite place to gig. There's well, just I have the same energy. feeling about Liverpool, full yeah. enough as well. And I, I actually, think, and I used to say this as a line. I'd say the thing about rivalries between cities is over a certain IQ level, it's actually a bit of a laugh. Yeah, under it, someone's going to get hurt. <laughs> <laughs> and that's basically what it is. It's a, it's an intelligence thing, isn't it? You know what I mean? So, and I think people who are coming to comedy. Uh, great, and I, I love playing Liverpool for that same reason because you can you can just right be on the right on the edge of sort of taking the piss and having and a, having a bit of fun without anyone being an arsehole, you know, and yeah, and taking it seriously. You know, I actually so. quite like in Manchester when I get booed straight away for the accent, yeah, because totally. it's like, well, we can have some fun with yeah, this what now. Do you want me to do? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's, but, but as far as like favorite gigs, I, I don't think I have a, a certain number. Um, you know, actually, that one we did in Shrewsbury is a lovely. Uh, you know, venue. So I have, I have nice ones like that. I love playing the Theatre Seven. Yeah, that was the first seven. time I've played the big room. I've been comparing the two hundred and fifty seater yeah, for yeah. years, and then you got me into support. Mm. Like I think we talked about it at the time, but Jason does the soundest thing you can do, which is v- unlike most comics. Of basically, you go on. You did. 15, mm. which is like the perfect amount of time, and then told a story about when you were doing support for someone, and then we're like, and this guy's a mate of mine, and you'll love him. And you walk out to do your 20 minutes, and they're like, 
yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, you warmed them up for me and then <laughs> gone, and this guy's a really great comic and he's a mate and yeah. supporting, you're like, you almost give them the insight into what it's like to be a support act. I've never walked out to an easier support of a famous comic. Yeah, they were like, nice one, yay. So many, like it's- I warm up for the warm up. I'm, I'm a fucking mug. That's what I am. <laughs> yeah, I haven't but been I doing it. that on my tour. I've been like, no. can you just go and fucking warm all them up, please, and get them ready? <laughs> so you must have been on the phone to John Bishop because he was on the, the tour at the same time as you yeah. and you were both trying to, I think it was basically job creation. You were both trying to get everyone who was coming out of the lockdowns a bit of work. Yeah, yeah. And John had obviously spoken to you. I know your mates and had gone, yeah, nice one. I'll compare and then bring someone on. And I, I, I supported for him in and around the same time I did it with you in Shrewsbury. And then about three months later, first time he went on, warned them up, was dead sound, got me on. I fucking hoofed it. And the, the next time I was, he was like, yeah, I'll just be off stage going, all right, everyone. Uh, yeah. Welcome to Bradford. Uh, here's this twat. Get on with it. When you're doing 200 and odd dates, you, I imagine there's a point where you think, fuck this, you know. But, yeah. um, but I actually like it. You know, I actually like going out and doing that bit beforehand as well because it feels like a bit of less pressure. I, I don't go on to any, you know, pomp yeah. and ceremony. I literally just wander on. Um it's got its drawbacks though, hasn't it? Because I seen a comment you got the other day that made me fucking oh. piss myself laughing. I don't know whether you're seeing this. No. So a guy commented on his thing saying, <laughs> fucking shite. You, all you did was 10 minutes about the last two years and then you brought some other cunt on. We didn't watch them. We left. Oh. Left. <laughs> oh. Yeah. They left. thought that was the show. That was the show? <laughs> There is then a break and you do an hour and ten. I thought, I thought, I wonder if he goes to the cinema and goes, it was just a load of other clips of other films. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't even the film. I didn't even see Batman. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my God. Don't do drugs, kids. I mean, it was <laughs> special time it for was so great. I love you can't, you know, there's nothing you can do about stupidity, but it was, as soon as I did it, I, I just thought that's got to go online. I know some <laughs> comics will get an absolute buzz out of it. So funny. Did you get support when you were coming up? Who are you? Who are you? Because you started, because I, this is weird, mm. because we sort of started at the same, similar time, except it was after you'd been to uni. So did you start when you were about 17 yeah. or 16? I started at And 17. then did stand up. And with like you were look, you were on at the frog with Peter Kay and all that, and then did you go to uni and, and then come back from that? I sort of carried on while I was at uni, right? And then, but not obviously you've got stuff to do. So uh, in the day and that, so I was doing the odd, the odd gigs here and there. So, but yeah, I started in 1998 when I first. Well, that's when I did my first ever gig, and that was which is like one of these stories now that has become sounds apocryphal, but it, it was true. Where I was just working at a comedy club in Cholton, Buzz Comedy Club. And um, I used to watch loads of comics, Mick, you know, Mick Ferry and Johnny Vegas and uh, Joe Caulfield and all these brilliant comics would go on and rip it. And big comics now, you know, uh, Joe Brand and Steve Coogan and people like that would do it as well. It was like the best it club in the, the Northwest, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, it was fantastic. Yes, Chinese restaurant now. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> apparently it's very good. Uh, so I used to watch this and I was... I haven't even been. No. <laughs> it's comedy journey sounds no, like... it's too sad. It's too sore. <laughs> it hurts too much. Eating shumai where you saw legends. Oh, <laughs> God. So yeah, I was working there and then... Which yeah, was hang on, you I got the job. Want. No, so you got the job because you wanted to be a comedian? No. Oh. No, I got a job because my mum said, go and get a fucking job. <laughs> And I based, I did that thing around your house where you go, where's the nearest place to my house that I could work? So I rang them up. I said, are you looking for anybody? Wash pots or, you know, sort of clean up and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, come in. So I came in, did a few weddings, a couple of funerals. And then they said, oh, we've got a comedy club on a Thursday, which I didn't, I didn't even know about. And it was one of those weird places. You find this across the country where, and all over this, the UK, I don't know how it happens, the roughest bare ass of a pub downstairs. And yet upstairs. Beautiful, delicate comedy <laughs> club where people are nuanced and listen to that. Oh, very clever, you know. It's weird. And that downstairs is like people with the tattoos yeah. on the side of his neck with like four women's names and three of them crossed out. <laughs> like, you're like, is this? Is it, is that, are they his exes or is it murder? Or <laughs> and, um, they all still eat there, as the Chinese. <laughs> yeah, <totally. laughs> the tattoos have got more international. <laughs> <laughs> so I worked there and then... So again, it sounds so like like a hot, like the water boy or something. But essentially, one night an act didn't turn up. There's two acts coming up from London, and uh, Agraman, the the, the guy around human the, anagram, human anagram, who ran the club. He's he's panicking, and I and I said, oh, what is going to be? I need someone to do twenty minutes. Like you know, the, the, uh, no one's around to to come and do it, and the show's literally about to start. I said, oh, what a nightmare! And then the 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 landlady came out. She went, Jason will do it. I said, no, no, I I can't. Do it. She went, he's funny. I went, I'm funny in the kitchen. 
We're all funny in the kitchen, not out there. He said, I'll give you 70 quid <laughs> if you'll go and do 20 minutes. I said, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, bearing in mind, I'm on £12 for the whole night. Yeah. Putting glasses. And then someone offered so me week's 70 wages. quid. So, um, yeah, went up and it went all right. And then it was one of those things that sort of went quite quickly. At the round about the same time, they were doing the City Life Northwest Comedian of the Year Awards. And I got off and Agraman said, you should enter that. And I said, all right, I might, I might do. And then, so my third gig was the heat. My sixth gig was the final. And I won. <laughs> and um, there is a, there's a picture of you I think the night you won mm. the, in the frog still and it's uh, unbelievable oh was I, that I, with them um, Charlie Chuck and, uh, and Dave, yeah. Dave is that the yeah, night yeah. you won it I don't think oh, I was no because it was at the right okay somewhere else but it was around that time I think it was BBC or oh Channel 4 so you were like 40% eyebrow it's phenomenal <laughs> oh it's phenomenal you just look so young yeah I know it was mad but, so I went to uni so as, as far as support's concerned um yeah, I did get a lot. Of, I got a lot of support from comics at the time. Um, uh, Peter K, funnily enough, um, was one of those acts who I obviously idolised. I thought he was amazing, and, and he um, he said to me, what, "What are you doing about university, or, or you know, you, you doing anything else?" I said, "No, no, I'm just doing. I'm just going to do this. Do stand up now. I'm a stand up. I'm Northwest comedian of the year. You won that." two years ago and I'll just be you and um, <laughs> <laughs> he was like, oh, I'm already me um, so yeah he and he he was like well you know you, you should think about what else you want to do and we had a chat one night I remember we were in, in uh, Fallowfield having a kebab after excess malarkeys or whatever oh it was at the God. time love it and uh, we were chatting about it and uh, and I said oh, I didn't get the grades at A level to, to be able to get into university I, I fucked up really so um, he said, oh, I'll give him a ring. I went to Salford. So he actually rang him. And then a couple of days later, I got a phone call from Salford. And they said, oh, are you coming for an audition? And uh, Peter's vouched for you, essentially. And, uh, even though you've not got the right what was your course? to get in. Oh, like media and performance. Or something. <laughs> like one of them sort of laugh, Mate, that's starting to knock know. out some acts, though. Media yeah, and performance. Yeah. Yeah. Josh so, Jones and Kiri. And like, there isn't a yeah, becoming a big list of like it, yeah. alumni. So yeah, so really that, that was a decent. And I, but I was doing stand up at the same time and um, trying to mix the two. The, the two. First time I ever gig with you is Excess Malarkey, and someone mm. was like, "Oh, Jason Manford on it." And I'd been around in Manchester about a year, and hadn't really heard of you. Mm. And I was like, "Oh, cool." And he was like, "Oh yeah, he's good. It's about your age, pretty good." I was like, <laughs> "Dead cocky." I was like, "I think I'm pretty good." So <laughs> I was like, "How long have you been going, Dad? Ten months." So <laughs> I think I know what I'm doing. I'm not sure. Let's let have a look at this kid. And you were, so when are we talking? 2002, 2003, you're 21. Yeah. <laughs> I watched your headline. I was like, how has he been doing comedy for 20 years? <laughs> you, you were my eight. And I honestly watched you going, ah, well, I haven't heard of him. He's probably done a few gigs. You'd, you'd been, you had five years of experience. Yeah. I, I was blown away. I was like, how the fuck has this happened? Well, it's weird because you get to a point where you're like, you know, even 15 years in, 20 years in, and there's com like there's men or, you know, women, but men generally who were like older than me by 10, 15 years who were like coming to you for advice on. Oh yeah. And you're like, oh, this very, is weird. very strange dynamic. It's weird, isn't it? So it's quite a weird thing in comedy. And I imagine in every industry, but I can only talk from comedy. It's the only industry I've ever really been in. I started when I was 18. I'm yeah. 12 years in now. Mm. And every other situation that I would meet a 50-year-old man in or a 40-odd-year-old man in, the, the power dynamic is he's my dad's mate yeah, or he's yeah, yeah, exactly. he's someone who is slightly younger than me dad but works for him. Yeah. And it's like, you're all right, kid. I'll buy you the pint. Like, that's normally <laughs> the thing. When you've got someone who's that much older than you coming to you going, how do I do this? It's such a weird thing to get yeah. used to and now i'm used to it now because it's yeah. been going on a long well, time i'll tell you a funny thing uh, so uh, one of the things that you do with stand-up is that a lot of time whether it still happens now but generally if you've got a load of gigs and um a load of people on a gig the open spot drives yeah the other the other acts you know it's just one of those it's one of the things you know you're doing it for petrol money and also you can do 10 They're minute the spot. Yeah, yeah essentially you do a 10 minute spot. make the coffee drive the car <laughs> you can drive you can it. have 10 <laughs> so i get this phone call will you do will you come and do this gig in sheffield toby foster he said, "I'll set at the the open spot's gonna pick you up uh, and drive you over." I said, "Oh great!" I was living with my gran at the time in Wibbington, so I said, "Come out." I'm like 22, I swear, yeah. and I come out on the drive, and this it's a fucking Audi on the on the driveway. I was like, "Fucking open spot!" Audi. Oh yeah, <laughs> and um, this fella gets out. It's, it's John Bishop. He's the open spot. And he's <laughs> driving us over. He was like a, a you know he was a salesman at the still working. Uh, I see. Pharmaceutical yeah. rep, which yeah. was based. 
in this block. Oh, right. There of this go. building. Oh, weird. Small weird. <laughs> so, yeah, so he was the open spot and driving us over. I was thinking, this is weird. And it's funny because John says, we talked about it uh, recently, actually, on his show, and he said it was weird because if we did, like, uh, three or four shows together, and he said, you know, the weird thing about it is I just, I felt like I looked like I was grooming him. <laughs> 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 Come with me. We're going to Sheffield, Jason. <laughs> Come in but the I mean, yard, there's rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, little boy. <laughs> a bit of an anomaly, though, the massive Audi, in it? Because yeah. Bish was like, it's his story is almost unheard of. I ended up on that tour, I told you about when he was like, yeah, just get on. I was like, there's been so many rumours about how much you were... Because I've heard people going, he was earning £300,000 a year. <laughs> yeah. Like, he was earning a lot of money, like, absolutely yeah. top tax band, and then doing open spots. Yeah. So, like, I, I, I've had lifts off guys, and it's usually someone turning up in a fucked-up course and be like, yeah. do you want to die today? Or <laughs> get to the gig. Um, amazing that he had the full Audi set up and then had oh, to... Yeah. I, I, he gave up... 80, 90, 100 grand a year yeah. to go, yeah, let's do comedy. That's yeah. a big give up, isn't it? Well, it works out. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, done all right. He's right. got any regrets? <laughs> he has done all right. Well, he never he never worked at the Heath. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong call. Jack, he sat in his helicopter going, oh, just want to sell drugs again. Legal Heli- ones. Helicopter? <laughs> Oh, John Bishop's got a helicopter. I reckon he might have a helicopter. He might he's have got, got a helicopter. His house was so big that when I remember, I don't, know, I don't know what his new one's like. I've not been down, but um, he, when he first like made it, and he moved from Didsbury out into the countryside, and he's <laughs> when he really made it, like yeah. Didsbury's I know, a shit on. I know exactly <laughs> when he got off the mean streets of Didsbury. <laughs> 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 and um, once he left and he, he went he had this lovely house which I thought I think was like former like Iranian ambassador or something like that as uh, one of these big old things and um, anyway lots right. of have been in that negotiation <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> John Bishop with an Iranian ambassador I want your house lad <laughs> so I rang him up and he said oh yeah come over and like come you know so I went over and I, I'm dr- driving up this bit long driveway and I get to this set of gates and I press the buzzer and there's no answer, so I end up ringing in mobile. I said, "Hi, mate." I said, "I'm at the gate." He went, "All right, mate. I'm just, I'm just out the back near the lake." <laughs> <laughs> what fucking big's this house? <laughs> it took him twenty minutes to walk from the back to the front gate to open to open it up for us. So that's oh, that was Jesus. the difference he'd made. Yeah, it was incredible. See, I, I am um, Patreon dot com slash have a word pod. <laughs> Papa want a lake. Now. Sign up now. Lake money. <laughs> <laughs> fucking lake lads. fund. Take a pond. Would you? Do you ever want that? Like if, you, if you got super successful, do you want like land? Want a few chickens and a goat and that? So I just want a fucking hot tub at the moment. <laughs> Can we just do it in stages? And what's have, the goal? Well, I haven't even paid off my wife's car. And I can't be like, <laughs> well, have you bought a lake, dickhead? You've not paid off the fucking. So I, I don't, don't know whether I want land or by <laughs> what. Yeah, but you don't. All right. Don't, <laughs> you don't want to leave West Derby. I have left West Derby. Oh, sorry. Of course in you the do. City yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. City, city boy. You want land? No, I'm saying I don't know whether I do. <laughs> City centre land. Yeah. I want a lake. What the fucking Mersey. <laughs> a lake Mersey. I'm oh, next to the lake. <laughs> it's the river dicker. <laughs> where would you go if you're looking for land though? You'd have to go like the lakes. The Whittle. Oh, go to the Whittle. No, but like you can go like sort of north Liverpool way, can't you? Like halfway to Ormskirk where it gets all fancy and that. Like up Ormby. that way. Up that yeah, way, that football, way. Football is um, Rufford. That's, that's a word. <laughs> so that's near there. Is it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Gary well, Lineker's I, house I, used to be around there. I when guarantee you, when, when you get that arena tour finished, lake, underfloor heating, indoor cats. I can see it. You've got it. I can see it all. I can see it. I can see it. In a year's time, you'll be like, Jason, have you got any tips on indoor cats? Or like, My cat's <laughs> Massive don't... house that smells of shit <laughs> near a lake that's gone rotten. That'd My cats won't do anything but swim in a lake and go on me heat of floor. That's all. They, they've got no interest in anything else. Don't like roofs. Don't like grass. Lakes. Heat of floors. That's all they're into. Swimming indoor cats. <laughs> <laughs> I want the lake to come into my house, into a swimming pool. What's the thing you've spent money on and you've you've know you've gone for it and then gone, oh, what have I done here? Or the, the thing you've been embarrassed to to spend money on and then admit to your missus? Oh, I d- I've loads of those. Um, <laughs> but at the moment, we've got a replica of Chitty Chitty Bang Bang on the front lawn. We spoke about this before. That is a weird little fucking coincidence. Right. He so loves start- Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. <laughs> the start of this show, right. I was talking about how much I love musicals. Yeah. Really into them. I know you do too. Yeah, yeah. Carl said they're utter shite. Oh, 
<laughs> no, I just don't like people singing what they can say. <laughs> yeah. He thinks musicals would be better if they just went. If they just taught them. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of singing for five minutes, right. oh, I'm sad and I'm lonely, just go, oh, I'm really sad well, What and they say in musical theatre is if you can't say it because it's so emotional, then you sing, sing it. it. And if you can't sing it, you dance. I love that one. Yeah, you can have oh, one. Okay, no. Oh, I mean, here he is. Hey. Change his tune. <laughs> hey, lives and breathes media performance from Salford. This one. <laughs> he basically hates all musicals that he didn't see before Do he was you, 10. But, but there's two different kinds of musicals. So oh. there's there's the musical where they just fucking sing all the way through. And I... not Cat, like, like Les Mis. Cat, like I don't mind Les Mis. Yeah, Les Mis is a great story and great characters. But And then there's the other one, which is just a play with music. That's what I don't like. Songs. When they're talking... I'm and going to go shop. Into it. I'm right. going to shop. And then like it turns into a song. Oh, the old going to shop. <laughs> Olivier yeah. winner, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it, he's actually bridged it from before it was, I'm going to shop. Do you want a cup of tea? <laughs> I could just say that in a play. <laughs> yeah, you're thinking of plays. That's right. Right. Yeah. Plays yeah. are weird. Chitty Chitty Bang Bang got a pass with him though, but you're well, a big Chitty Chitty well, Bang I, Bang. I was Karatska's Pots for a year. So yeah, that's we one. toured it all over the place. Yeah, so it was, um, and it was a gr that's a great show to do. Yeah, it was a right laugh. But at the end of the, t the tour finish, obviously they're getting rid of all the props. And um, they're getting went, rid of the car. They're getting rid of everything. Yeah, and, and, and I didn't think anything of it because they were thinking about going back out on tour with it. And then the company that did it went was going out of business. So they put them all up. I found it one evening, like, you know, first couple of weeks of lockdown. And I was like bored. And I was just on this auction site. <laughs> So dangerous. I know. And um, I just did that. I, I, I bid for about eight or nine things just for a bit of fun. Just, oh, I remember the breakfast making machine. Yeah, I might buy that. It was like 100 quid. And so then I um, I bid for Chitty Chitty Bang Bang and then got an email saying you'd won. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> right, so there's a thing coming this week. It's a car, but not a car you can drive. <laughs> and it's on your front lawn. And, and I just thought, do you know what? Let's lean into it. So in the middle of the, yeah, basically in the middle of the front lawn. That's still you clinging onto your working class roots though, isn't it? Because the lads you grew up with have got like fridges and shit in their front garden. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, I'm putting Sutton there, but it's going to be a replica of a car from a musical. <laughs> That's my way of clinging to me roots. <laughs> There's still Sutton in the garden that doesn't quite belong there. Yeah, it definitely doesn't, but I love it. <laughs> it's great. I just bought a gorilla to wind my wife up. Oh, nice. it's just, I, I really, I want ornaments in the garden. I've got a really strong pull to... Just a gor gorillas in the mist, just but in my shrubbery in the garden. Is there anything you would? Soon buy as Laura's like, no, we're not getting it. I bought it. Yeah, and I'm just hiding it behind like a little shrub. I, I went <laughs> on a bit of a train. I went on a bit of a trainers binge as well at one point. Oh wow. yes, yeah. Okay. I've got I've got boxes of trainers that I will never wear. That I don't even know if they're worth anything, but they just I just bought them. I sort of got that stock X, you know. On, yeah. on oh and yes, and that and they started getting up because they do this thing where they go. You can enter the draw for this, like an yeah. exclusive pair of trainers. So you enter it and then you win it and then it costs you 150 quid. You're like, I've not won it then, have you I? You're a lucky winner. <laughs> so you feel like a winner. You win the right to buy it. <laughs> yeah. But no one so ever wins and not buys them. So they've got you by the bollocks. Yeah. You yeah. don't win and go, oh, nah. You go, no. oh, I better buy them then. So yeah, we've got a garage full of um, trainers that I don't, I don't even know what to do with. I've got a lot of trainers. Mm. Yeah. It's getting out of hand. I've got these. These are, these are Ma a Manchester B Nike uh, Air Force Ones. Air Force Ones, ones yeah. Oh, nice. There you go. It's a little bee on the... On the They're very nice. Though. Is there any sort of movie prop that you would buy? <laughs> what have you got? I'm not wearing shit trainers today. Get in. <laughs> I'm always wearing... <laughs> shit. Oh, horrible oh. cunt. Oh. I just said, not my opinion These that this shit. These are Nike waffles. Got waffles on. You've got waffles. I have. They're right. vapor waffles. It's like eyes, though. Yeah. Oh, yes. I didn't realise we were wearing vapor waffles. <laughs> Pricks. I'm not giving you a blowjob. Literally bought them thinking the knobheads are like these. They are nice. They are they're lovely. All right. They go with your I'm jumper. trying to wear Scout shoes. Don't turn on them. Need some one tens. Yeah, I get some one tens. I get some one fifteens. I think Adam's got a question. Oh, sorry, Adam, you got a question. I want to know if you'd buy a movie prop or a, a, a prop from a, a show. Because mm. I a few years ago, I was doing a gig for a mutual friend of ours, uh, Peter Vincent, mm -hmm. up in the northeast. Hello, Peter. I think it was Stokesley, maybe. Love, love Stokes, though. Right. And I'm on with Barry Dodds of Have A Word fame. And Had him on the other night, supported me on the... He's great. He's great, great actor. Um, he's also Sorry. a lunatic, mm -hmm. which he won't mind me saying, I hope. He's, he's fine. Um, and he, at the time, was doing the Parapod still with um, Ian Boldsworth. Mm -hmm. And Ian collects Star Wars stuff. 
Right. And someone had a life-size replica of R2-D2. Okay, right? yeah. So he'd asked Barry to go and collect it from this place in Hartlepool or nearby at midnight. So Barry is shitting himself. He's like, what, what am I going to do? And I, he was like, Adam, will you come with me? And I was like, well, I'll go just for the story. Yeah. <laughs> so we pull up to this place at midnight. After, so you've done the gig, and done then the you've gig. gone to get R two D two. Yeah, all normal. It was from it was on like a oh, big industrial estate. There was, I can't explain. I'll find a photo on my phone. There, there's a gate that looks like if you go beyond it, like you can't complain if you get murdered. Right, right. <laughs> so we get there, and Barry's like, "Oh, I'll ring him." So the guy answers the phone, and he's like, "Yeah, I'll come and get you." Right. In that voice? Like that. Are, you, are you misremembering <laughs> it? No, no, no. no. I'll fucking come and get you. Nah. Oh, he's a cockney. It's Ray Winston. Winston. He is Ray Winston. It's Ray Winston. <laughs> Hello, give you a cheeky hacker. Look at these odds. Ian Boldsworth bought oh. R2D2. <laughs> I'll give you that? five to two on getting you? fucking murdered. <laughs> um, so he comes and he, he has to like open the gate with two hands. It's that heavy fucking and old. Hell. And he's just doing this. He's going... And Barry's like, I don't want to drive in. How many answers like, you got? What? How many answers you got? Yeah, three. So he stops opening it, <laughs> does this, carries on That's opening it. Good spot there, Carl. <laughs> right? Thank you for picking, like, <laughs> holding me to account on the story. Tell me a fault. I, yeah, I appreciate yeah. it. Me I love a 45 minute God's story. Way. Yeah, yeah, it's my fault, your fault. Um, he, he, he says, just dra- he said it's about 200 yards. And it, there's no light, there's nothing, it's pitch oh, black. Like Jimmy and Goodfellas, just keep going. Yeah. Just keep going in Literally, there. Literally, and I was yeah. like, Barry, we're going to get killed. I've, he was like, I went, how are you paying for this? He went, I've got cash. I went, you're a fucking idiot. You're an absolute oh, You're never paid for, for, for an R2-D2 in cash. Pay like 500 quid for this fucking big thing. So we go in. We, we, we drive all the way in, and it's this little, it looks like, you know, like your garden office. Yeah. It's about that big, but it's not as fancy. It It's made of wood, and it's like, oh, what the fuck? So then he comes behind and just knocks on the back window and goes, yeah. Right? So we get out the car. And then we went inside and it was absolutely fine. And the fella's just a lunatic and he makes Star right. Wars stuff. But one of the scariest things I've ever done. But, but he, also pissing myself laughing at the same time. Yeah, just to, to do it to do it with the biggest scaredy cat in comedy, Barry and, Dodds. <laughs> you had to paint it yourself. So it was just all I white. I quid. I know. But Ian collects stuff like that. I just want to know, is there anything you'd buy from anything? <laughs> well, I'd buy the big dog from Friends. What? Oh, the white yeah. dog from Friends. That the, the lads um, riding on when they were in the apartment. Yeah. I'd buy that. You're ruining moving day for us. When I got the garden office, mm. yeah, it's a good thing to get as you're struggling to come out of a recession and a lockdown. I got a uh, Stay Puffed marsh- Marshmallow Man. Oh, right. About That's this business. big. Obviously, you can't get full size because mm. he was a giant. Yeah. I feel like it's going to be something like Ecto-1. I nearly bought Eric Walker's car. <laughs> His yeah. actual car. Is that actual in movies car, or was it yeah. just his car? No, no, just we were talking about memorabilia and stuff, yeah. I nearly bought that. <laughs> was it definitely or was it just like an old yeah, no, Ford Orion? Yeah, thing. I, I was going to buy it. <laughs> no, it was like a, it was, I can't remember what it was now. It was a Mercedes. Royce. I think oh, it was a Mercedes. Okay. And um, anyway, I, I nearly bought it. This the Eric Morecambe Society or whatever was like, oh, we're looking for someone to buy Eric Morecambe's car. And I was like, oh, that'd be cool thinking. I'll rock up at gigs in Eric Morecambe's car. You know, be what I look at. imagine that level of fame and and love from people. Where yeah, imagine we get famous enough that I someone can sell my Kia Sportage <laughs> for like way above. Yeah. Kia He'll Sportage. buy it. He's got a fucking. <laughs> he's got a garage going. <laughs> Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Eric Morecambe, and this is Adam Rose Kia Sportage. <laughs> yeah, <And the> d- <laughs> he scratched it on the side himself. <laughs> and the the Penrith Fiesta. <laughs> if you open the window, you can actually still smell chips. <laughs> you can still fucking see chips. <laughs> <laughs> still, <laughs> that's just the still in the fucking car, Jesus. <laughs> Did you get it? No. No, no. In the end, it turned out they were looking for someone to buy it so it could go in a museum oh, right. <laughs> to give it them back. I was a bit like, nah, you're not. <laughs> I'll just come to the museum. I'll just yeah. tell people I own it. That's an NFT. I bought it? that. That's an NFT. But yeah, like a real life NFT. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, not for me. What would you buy, Adam? Oh, you get the Friends dog. I'd like the Friends dog. Um, I'd buy one of the guitars from School of Rock. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I would is, I'm going to, basically. I'd this buy the gavel from A Few Good Men. <laughs> mm. 
I'd buy Colonel Jessup's hat from A Few Good Men. I'd buy Tom Cruise's suit from A Few Good Men. I like A Few Good Men. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The electric chair from Green Mile. No. Ooh. Yeah, just next to the front door. Put the, your shoes on. The mug from Usual Suspects is smashed, though, isn't it? That'd be fucking good. Yeah, to put it back together. Um, good. To, to, little, little, I, yeah, I love it. I love it. Well. I love it in our uh, in our <laughs> podcast where I look over at the guests and they're going. <laughs> 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 the fuck? Uh, shall we have an interval? Let's have an interval. Let's get a sponsor to sell us something. Buy it us. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what adverts are. Mm-hmm. Wag Wag Lids, let's talk about Manscaped.com. Go to Manscaped.com, the very best in men's below-the-belt grooming. Sort your pube game out, Lids. This I've been preaching this for a while. You've got to have the thatch under control. Take control. It's going to help yourself. going to help your sex life. Go to Manscaped.com. Use the code WORD20 for 20% off and free delivery. What you get? There's all sorts. Go and have a look at the website. They're our main sponsor, but we genuinely believe in these guys. They sent us one of their packs. It was amazing. There was creams. There was like deodorants, a pair of knickers, and the Manscaped Lawnmower 4.0 is a phenomenal bit of kit. No nicks. You can use it in the wet. It's got a little light so you don't like chop a leg off. It's really good bit of pube. My wife uses it. She's not going to appreciate me saying it. Laura uses it. As a pube trimmer, it's a it's the family pube trimmer. And as I'm saying it out loud, I realise that it's just mine and Laura's. It's not the full family's. Her mother-in-law is not allowed access. But it's an amazing bit of kit. Check them out, manscaped.com. If you order anything, which you should, use code WORD20, 20% off everything, and free delivery. Enjoy. So we've got some correspondence here on the old female... Um, Liam says, talking about support acts, quick one, Liz, would you rather only be a comedy tribute act for a whole year or you have to take one on tour with you as support for five years? I will take one on tour with me as support for five years and never watch a second of them because I am not resorting to being the lowest form of entertainment on the planet. Okay. Thanks for watching all <laughs> the tribute acts. <laughs> So last time we talked about last time we talked about this, a P, we were talking about the Peter K oh, tribute wow, acts, yeah. Keith, like whatever they're called, Pathetic. Keith Laird or something. Yeah, like, he's even the um, what I think he's like the big dog. I think yeah. there's guys. Well, that, Peter's not gigging, is he? So he's, he's, that dream of being Keith Laird. I'm yeah. like, oh fucking hell, <laughs> brand leader. Um, someone got in touch and was like, y- "If you want to come and see me, I'm in Warrington this night." In St. Helens that night, and I'm I'm drawn to it in a weird way. I know. And I don't mean. know if I could handle it's it. Weird, isn't it? Because you know, with when it comes to music, if we take our opinions to one side, I mean, I, I agree with you, but if we just <laughs> put the vitriol. Oh to yeah, one it's side, grim, but it, yeah. I want to see just, it. If we move it to one side, <laughs> why do we accept it with music? I don't. Not comedy. I would but despise we, but, us at all. But yeah, as a society, okay, we enough. do. Oh, I, I don't. Right. Okay. But I don't. Oh look. Right, well, don't watch Star Trek. <laughs> Robbie on a Williams, night. look at me tattoos. <laughs> Fuck off. Do not watch my new show, Starstruck, on a Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> you will fucking hate it. <laughs> I will not be watching that. No, it's not for you. It's not for you. Is there anything about musicals? Because then he's right back in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, it's not Alexander Hamilton, the real one. In the musical. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, you got it now, aren't you? No. You thought it was Alexander Hamilton, <laughs> the fifth gay president of the United States of Canada. Or some, however it goes. If Alexander Hamilton had written his own autobiographical <laughs> play and had written all the songs, maybe I'd hate the musical. Oh, yeah. But someone matching their haircuts to their favourite singer and then drawing fake tattoos on and going on stage to be like... It is weird, isn't it? So I've got some tribute acts in my family. Um, so my family. Oh, are, you've really fucked yeah. this up. It's his TV show. It's his Christmas day. I, I have got very resolute opinions but on look, this. I, I'm fine with that. Mum's Barbara Streisand, Dad's Tom Jones. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but we have we genuinely have. We've got um, so my uncle. So they're all in musical, uh, like music bands and, and and stuff. Growing up, show bands and stuff. And then when they went their separate ways, so I've got one uncle who's, who does uh, Michael Bublé every Friday night. Um, and I've got another uncle who he does him. Who does him? Yeah, he does him. Don't do Saturdays. Got, and, and I've got I don't do Saturdays. I go the game. Well, he's actually a, he's actually a vicar, so he can't, he can't do Saturdays. <laughs> Fuck off! He, honestly, he can't do he can't do Saturdays. He's working Sunday morning. 
So he's got his own church. <laughs> but he does Michael Bublé during the week. And then my other uncle, Brendan, he's uh, Neil Diamond uh, impersonator, Neil Diamonte. I thought you were going to say uh, a day um, of the no. week. Yeah, honestly, it's true. No. That's my uncle Brendan, yeah. So I've got a couple of them. My auntie does Kate Bush. So I've actually got, there's quite two or three... Uh, knocking about. There's no way that's true. Mate, honestly. I'm Your the uncle is a Michael Bublé tribute act who's also a vicar. Uncle Dennis, yeah. <laughs> and the other one is Neil Diamonte. Neil, Di- Neil Diamonte. Yeah. yeah. So it's quite, it's quite a rich family of tradition. You had no chance. <laughs> I mean, what, so when I said I want to work in show business, there was no surprise. <laughs> yeah, of course. No one was like, if I'd have gone, I want to be an accountant. Not under my roof. <laughs> So yeah, it's quite a big um, it's quite a big deal actually. But I, I must say, what's weird about the tribute act world is they believe a lot of them believe it. Not my uncles necessarily, but a lot of them believe it. I did a gig years ago at the Embassy Club, Bernard Manning's place, a, a charity. Gig. This is a bit legendary. This one. Did you get asked to do it, or did you ask to do it? Because it's from like a different world, isn't it? It is a different world. No, I got asked to do it, and it was Bernard, me, and Elvis. <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> yeah, yeah, Elvis. Yeah. It wasn't the Elvis, to be fair. I don't know yeah. if he's done Rochdale. But... but we had a breaking news story there. <laughs> <laughs> and um, there was only one dressing room and Elvis wouldn't share. So he was like, no, he wanted it to himself because he had to get ready. He was like, you know, you know, you're a comic. You just turn up and do the... I've got to get ready. I've got, I've got to get into Elvis. I was like, okay, I, I'm fine with that. I don't need to watch that. And, um, and then so afterwards, um, afterwards, I think maybe I'd done a bit of 8 out of 10 cats or something. I don't know what had happened, but I'd definitely done a bit of telly or something, enough for someone to want a photo afterwards. And I was coming out, and these two women came, can we get a photo? And I went, yeah, fine, no problem. I did a little photo. And then Elvis come out, still as Elvis. He's not even used the fucking dressing room. And uh, he'd come out, and the girls went, oh, can we get a, can we get a picture? And he went... Uh, no pictures, no, thank you. I was like, mate, you're from fucking Rochdale. <laughs> Have a photo. He believed it so much that he was just like in the... He was a very good Elvis. <laughs> he literally had a what would Elvis do moment. In the like, no, 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 no Elvis photos. Thank you very much. I'm leaving the building. No. Uh, it was, yeah. So uh, they yeah. are that person when they're big. Just, not all of them, but yeah. They, there's, a, there's a few like pockets, I think, in show business of... Like the the more you talk to them, the weirder they are. Like comics, are, we're on a level. We're, there's obviously something going on here that we crave attention. I mean, it's not it's obvious, isn't it? You know, not so enough you, to put an Elvis costume. Not on. enough for, to do that. Yeah. Then you've got those people who, 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 who I guess have have got a talent to mimic someone else. The weirdest people in show business, I think, are ventriloquists. All of them. Now, don't get me wrong. You, you've got your Paul Zerdins and your Nina Contes and that who are normal-ish. Yeah. But when you get into it and you're sat in a room with just a ventriloquist, it's fucking weird. <laughs> just a matter of they're time. Weird. Honestly, they're weird, yeah. They're I think just, it's absolutely mental. I they don't know who they are. It. They yeah. don't know who they are. And they've, and they've got someone just talking all the time. That is most... I interviewed Nina Conti the other week and I said it to her. I said, ventriloquists are weird, aren't they, like generally? And she said, yeah, because your longest relationship you've ever had with anyone is a fucking puppet on the end yeah. of your hand. Yeah. It's <laughs> you get what, you get paid. I can't get past. So and look, I can suspend my belief with stand up, and this yeah. is something I need to enjoy a proper stand up. Is obviously an intelligent person who watches a lot of stand up knows that the comedian has gone on stage and is not saying it for the first time. Yeah, they've done yeah. it every night for a year or whatever. But you have to suspend your belief watching a stand up comedian for a lot of the emotion in the routines. Yes, that it it is spilling out of them. Right, so that's why, for me personally, I don't love watching an hour of one-liners because mm. I can't believe it for that long. I yeah, can't yeah, do it. Yeah, I cannot suspend my belief enough with a ventriloquist because when they're like, meh, 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 right, I'm like, yeah, but you're saying that, like, and it's <laughs> like, <laughs> see, I disagree. That's I you. Think. You're saying. Imagine if he said this. Yeah, but he hasn't because it's a puppet, and you're saying that. But I think if you watch someone like Paul Zerden, who is so good at it. Like, I think, especially if you're in the audience, maybe different side of stage, but in the audience after five minutes, I think you're in. I've seen, like, crowds at Jonglers on a Thursday, you know, first Friday, Saturday night in the middle of Leicester, who has been a bear pit all night, and then he brings out a fucking baby, and they're going, fucking, you know, this is comedy. <laughs> you know, so, you're you following I mean? Paul? Yeah. No, I'm not. <laughs> oh, I'd say the, the best story I've ever heard about ventriloquist. So... This is back in the day. This is like in the 70s. Roy Walker told us this. We were talking about mad sort of moments that have happened in dressing rooms. 
Do you, this might be before your time. I mean, not yours, Dan. Um, but uh, the, the other lads same age as Jason. Just because we're the same age. All I'm saying. I'm just saying because we're the same age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we're mates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was back in the day. There was, uh, there was an act called uh, Ray Allen with Lord Charles. And he had a, it was like a monocled like puppet with a top hat. And, it was, you know, that was his little thing, right? So Roy, Roy says, so that they were doing this gig in Blackpool. And he's turned up, uh, Ray Allen. He's got a massive trunk. And he goes into the room and uh, in the dressing room, they're all just sat around in the dressing room having a fag or whatever, just chilling out before the gig. Oh, there you go. There he is, exactly there. And, oh, I've, uh, I've, I remember. Terrifying. Yeah, I'd, absolutely Jace, terrifying. do you remember him? Yeah, I mean, I, I remember, remember this. this. Yeah, yeah, you will do. Yeah. So this is, that's Ray Allen and, and Lord Charles, right? So he turns up, he comes in the room and he hangs Lord Charles up on a little hook. <laughs> and he puts his trunk there and he goes, he says, I'm just going to get myself sorted, have a shower or whatever, you know. He said, um, as he's leaving, he goes, oh, boys. And there's like four or five of them in there. He goes, don't look in the trunk. And then leaves the room. Oh. <laughs> now, that's weird anyway. You're sat, and the, so they're all sat there all of a sudden. They weren't going to look in the trunk. But now he said, don't look in the trunk. They're like, I'm going to look in the trunk. <laughs> so one of them goes over. Maybe Roy, one of the others, opens the trunk. There's hardly anything in this trunk. There's a couple of spare parts of Lord Charles, maybe. You know, a spare suit, some toiletries and whatever. Weird. And he closes the trunk, puts it back in its place, sits back down. Ray Allen comes back in five minutes later, looks up at Lord Charles on the hook, and, lo and Lord Charles goes, they looked in the trunk. <laughs> he fucking froze the voice to the puppet. They looked in the trunk. How oh fucking weird is that? Oh my God, that's horrible. The, the puppet didn't really say it. You oh look like he's like, <laughs> like he's looking Annabelle. Like, but how did he make the string? I, I, I don't know if the the thing moved, but the voice was enough. Right, okay. To go he wasn't look. moving. And also mouth. the fact that he knew something that had happened when he wasn't in the room. Fucking weird. That's got, that that guy's got a bit. He knows every time yeah, he, yeah. he goes for a piss. So, yeah. He's just gone for a little walk around the corridors. Yeah, totally. Like, this is my bit. They're, they're the best. Have you ever sat with one of the old boys and just listened to some of those stories from the back in the day? They're incredible. You need to get somebody, you know, Mick Miller or someone like that on, on We'd here. love to get Mick on, actually. Honestly, the stories, are, they're on another level. We've got stories of heckles and stuff I'm like that. I'm doing a gig with him next week, and you, actually, for the, the Ukraine benefit. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah well, we should him. probably plug that, actually. On the 18th of April, there's a, a benefit gig for the Ukrainian war effort. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're funding them. Yeah, at the Manchester Apollo. <laughs> Maybe so not, not so we, flippant. Uh, the Ukraine need bombs. <laughs> we are raising money with comedy for bombs to was back Just over to Russia. Just from what I was texting me and said, will you do a charity gig for me? It's something to do with Ukraine. I and think I it's just more said, for yeah. the refugees. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah, it's to arm the refugees <laughs> with nukes. <laughs> yeah. We're giving every Ukrainian refugee a nuke and sending them back. Yeah. And the one gig at the Manchester Apollo is going to fund the entire so thing. So good. Yeah. You love charity, don't you? I do. Loves Les it. Dennis is on. <laughs> Les Dennis is pro nukes. Yeah. <laughs> Phil Walker is obviously Roy Walker's son is yes. someone we've all gigged with loads he got, I've been mates with him for a while lived in St Anne's for a little bit and we used to have a coffee and I am such a I love asking about the old days oh, that's great so Phil was the son of a legend you just mentioned Roy Walker yeah, yeah. Roy Walker host from, of catchphrase yeah. if anyone say what you see yeah, say what you see absolute legend just lived round the corner for the whole of their childhood from Les Dawson who's one of oh, my favourite yeah. old comics. You were talking about yeah. the legends who you used to grow up when I was a little kid. Les Dawson held in such high esteem. There was so an old funny. shepherd from Greece who did terrible thing to his geese, but he went too far with the budgetary guard and the parrot rang the police. <laughs> Just amazing. <laughs> Just so I remember that. Just <laughs> Watching him play the piano wrong. So and Phil was like, yeah, I've got some weird memories from, obviously, my dad's mates were all TV legends. Yeah. And I was like... What do you remember? He was like, yeah, one day, middle of summer, a Rolls Royce pulled up outside and it was Les Dawson in Speedos, <laughs> oiled up in flip-flops, <laughs> cigar. He'd been sunbathing and he decided he needed to tell Roy something. So drove round <laughs> St. Anne's, oiled up, like, like Ray Winston in that in the film, you know, like absolutely yeah. shining. Came and he went, is your dad in? <laughs> He was like, no, he's not. He's like, right, I'll wait for him. Came in the living room and sort of like span it on the spot and went, oh, I've oiled up. I've oiled up. No, your mum will be fuming if I sit down. <laughs> Go and get me some towels. Go and get me some towels. I'll wait for your dad. Made Phil Walker run upstairs, get some towels out. He went, lay them on the floor. Lay them on the floor. He laid towels out. Les Dawson lay on the towels 
so he didn't get oil on the couch and started just telling jokes to, to a child, Roy Walker. Roy's like, I've got a very strong memory of just sitting on the couch, pissing myself laughing at a shiny Les Dawson smoking a cigar, doing his set. Brilliant. Oh, yeah, loved they're it. great. They're, the, the, I mean, obviously, they're the big boys as well. When I first started, uh, before actually, before I started standing, I was about 15 and I had this girlfriend whose uncle was a comic on the old circuit, Dave Barron. And he'd play like in the clubs, and in, in, and I was interested in it. I was I was always asking him questions, and he said, "Oh, do you want to come to a gig?" And you know, we're going to Blackpool. So I just used to hold his shirt, and sort of so I could get in, you know, with him and and sit with him, and uh, and then you'd be in these dressing rooms, everybody fagging away and just like chatting. It. And the best story I ever heard was it was at this club, the number one club in 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 Blackpool, and there was an old comic on, like in his sort of fifties, sixties. Um, and he'd been, you know, he'd, do, he'd doing forty minutes. And I don't know if you know this, but like, there's a, and even now to a certain extent, there's there's a point with some club owners where you have to do your time, like twenty minutes, thirty minutes, forty minutes. The time, irrespective of whether it's funny or it's going well, that's not because that's just people's opinions. Time is not an opinion. So this there's an old story from Alexander's because Alexander's used to be like that. You yeah. do your forty minutes. Yeah, yeah. And there's a story I won't name him in case it doesn't want to be named. There's a Manchester comic who did thirty eight and come off. And the woman who used to run it was like, you're not getting paid, you haven't done your time. And he went, he shouted at the audience, went, just stay where you are. Uh, I need to do another two minutes. He went back on, started his watch, said an, not another word, stood there for 120 <laughs> seconds, and I went, good night. I went, got his money. Wow. Never played it again. It's not That's usually ridiculous. the good clubs that have these rules. Yes, they don't. People can judge it. But this club had this rule. So this guy's doing 40 minutes, and he's not just dying on his arse. No one's heckling. We can deal with that, heckling and being on. People are not listening, and they're just chatting quite quite loudly and chatting away and just doing their own thing, and no one's listening. And he gets to the end. It's one of those clubs in the day where you weren't allowed to swear or do anything sexual, and like that, so you just have to do, you know. So he gets to the end of his act, and he says, thank you, good night, and he leaves, like, despondent, as you can imagine. And the noise and the rabble behind him of people just talking has not changed. And as he's walking off to the dressing room, the bingo trolley is coming the other way, and it gets wheeled up onto the stage, and as it does a hush falls across the audience and something just twigs in his head. He's like, I fucking live it. And he runs back out onto stage and he's giving it, you set of fucking swans. You cunts, every single one of you. I've been doing this job for 40 years. Man and boy, you disrespected me. I've done 40 minutes my best stuff. You didn't even fucking listen. The bingo trolley comes on and you're quiet for that, you fucking ignorant. And he's giving it and the club secretary is running across the, trying to stop it. And he goes, he's like, Dave, Dave, we were just having a minute silence for somebody who uh, who died last week. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> oh, hell, I love that moment. <laughs> just on stage like that. Mm, okay. <laughs> See you next week. I love it. Love it. Um, so, yeah. Sorry, what was the question? <laughs> that that happens a lot. <laughs> um, <laughs> from, oh, this is uh, anonymous by the looks of it. Wigwam boys. Question. If you lived in the US, would you own a gun? Would you have a little handgun just for some peace of mind? Or would you go all out and get a big <laughs> fuck off rifle shotgun? Rifle also, shotgun. which of you would be the first to accidentally shoot yourself in the leg eight mile style? That's from Ben, sorry. I'd absolutely have a gun in the States. I don't agree with the gun laws. I don't necessarily think they should be, I think they should be a lot more gun control. But if every other cunt's got one, I'm having one. Right. That's the argument that, they, that, that yeah. the, the mental gun people say, though, isn't 100%. it? hundred oh, percent. So uh, yeah, yeah. yeah I, un, I totally understand their argument. Right. I don't agree with it. No, no, but if I was no, in their position, I'd be like, you know what? We should get rid of them. Are we all getting yeah. rid of them? We're all getting rid of them. Right, take mine as well. You're keeping yours, are you, John? I'm having mine as well. Cool. And also, in Scotland last week, John. I fired a shotgun. Yeah, and it made me good. feel very powerful. Right, now good. I actually kind of want oh, you all get rid of them. You all get, you've got rid of them. I'm keeping mine. I actually what was offered... this? It's just, just on the Royal Mile, or <laughs> <laughs> went to a shooting range during oh, Paul Smith's stag do. Yeah, right. And uh, I actually offered the fella uh, double money to sell me a shotgun because they've got them on sale for five hundred quid. And he's like, yeah, "But you need a license." I was yeah. like, "Well, if I give you the grand, can I just have it?" We well, we bags. You are putting bungs out everywhere. Parking spot. Thank you very much. I'll keep that gun. Nice one. 
I, I just thought I'd li- quite like to have back. a shotgun. He wanted cool. a shotgun for the studio. I said how much, and he was like, "That." And he was like, "We can't get one." I was like, "Please." I honestly do don't think you should be allowed a for? Nerf gun in here. It'd be cool to have a gun oh, on, the wall, on the wall, not just like yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. One of the other offices are being too yeah. noisy. If an yeah. overzealous <laughs> scientist comes in, it's like, "Do you want to fucking leave, do you, John?" Do you ever have that? that, that <laughs> <laughs> What's this, John guy? Doing? Oh, John! Fucking <laughs> John is everyone. He sounds like a right John, he can't. He just goes in his like FA Cup draw. Trying man's name. It's John again. <laughs> John again. Poor bastard. John's away he's to John. <laughs> he's over in America. He's, he's an overzealous scientist. <laughs> oh, it could have been Puerto Rico. Juan. <laughs> <laughs> we need that bag of names. Now, I'm going to make it because I'm going to do a little FA Cup draw just for when the next John comes in. I you want do have f- a name, gaff. though. Don't you? I always, I, mine's Jeff. I was, yeah, I mine's Jeff. Jeff. My, Oh, look at that one, Absolutely. Jeff. Yours is usually I always Jeff. Go, I always go Jeff. I think it's just yeah. a funny I name. go Jeff when it's just me and you. Yeah. I, I, like, but that's, oh, that's but like he's showing thing. off, it's John. It's just John. <laughs> John's just the first name that comes to me. Every time. I, I, sort of, I sort of don't disagree with you with the gun thing, to be honest. I think I'd, I'd be the same, I think. If they suddenly brought them into Stockport, you know, if we just had our own little thing. What do you mean suddenly? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's it. Not where I live. <laughs> and, uh, and not the lake. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, have you shot a gun? Don't leave the bullets on the heated floor. <laughs> um, <laughs> how hot does this floor get? <laughs> have I ever shot a gun? Um, I've done the old, you know, stag do, you know, uh, shooting. <laughs> that's what I meant. I didn't yeah. mean. Have you ever shot someone no, 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 coming up? You know, I know you went to uni in Salford. <laughs> exactly, exactly. No, but when I was a kid, so my uncle, who thankfully now has turned his life around, um, and he's a drugs counsellor for the NHS, but the he's reason, not the Neil Neil Diamante. It's, no, it's a different. There's eleven of them to be <laughs> fair. My mum's got eleven brothers and sisters. So he has very much turned his life around now. But back in the day, was a wrong one. You know, like you know, when like the FBI employ a hacker to sort out computers yeah. he now gets people off drugs because he's also managed to get himself off drugs but when we were a kid he stole our car and um so we were we got up one morning for school there was no car there my <laughs> mum had a yellow triumph dolomite oh which is and and he she's now so, on jason's front lawn <laughs> <laughs> and he went and did a drug deal with it i mean that is not the car <laughs> To be inconspicuous <laughs> in the middle of Moss Side doing a drug Yeah, but deal. that's the thing. Hide in plain sight. They'll never see you coming. They'd never, they would never expect that to be the drugs car. The, the police will have underestimated them there. Yeah. It, it, well, anyway, it turns. Steal a police car, do a drug deal <laughs> in a police car. They're not looking. They're like, no, that's all right. He's police. <laughs> it very much went that's wrong. That's a bastard of a car, though. Yeah, can we, can we have a look at, at the Dolomite? Look at the Dolomite. Oh, for the audio listeners, this is about to get sexy. Oof. Oh. Yeah. So that was my mum's car, which we would often say, can you drop us off at the end of the road for school? <laughs> Are you messing? I'd want to be driving right through the fr- school gates and that. <laughs> yeah, now, that's a classic. Back then, it was... It Jason, basically- are we definitely the same age? I know. Because that looks like a car <laughs> from 1953. Jason's younger than you. Jason's only 40. Right. Wow. Wow. Oh, I wow. love I love our little chitty chat <laughs> on the podcast. Chitty chat chat. Chitty chat chat. That was our car. And um, anyway, when it turned up eventually, the next because my, my uncle's not a, a total wrong. And the car did come back eventually. He didn't steal it. He borrowed it. He borrowed it. Yes. But this, when it came back, it had four bullet holes in the back on the back wing, uh, which never got fixed. So they were just there for our whole. Like the rest of our childhood, the rest of that car. So we go to school, and like, um, and I would like basically charge people forty p to come and have a look at the bullet holes in our car. And no one <laughs> fucked with your mum ever again because <laughs> yeah. she was the badass dropping off yeah. with bullet holes bullet in the holes dolomite. In the back of the dolomite. So there you go. There's another story I've never said out loud. <laughs> wow. I don't know why. <laughs> what a shitty thing to do. Going to do a drug deal. I'm yeah. going to steal my sister's car <laughs> just for a few days. Well, it's it's very hard to get those conversations out when you're doing the Alan Titchmarsh show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it says here, Jason, that it's your uh, thing, uncle Alan. was a drug addict. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you should mention that, Alan. <laughs> uh, should we do some advice? I feel that like Jason would be good at advice. Uh, yeah, I mean, you're yeah. excellent at advice. Yeah, that's why people write in, isn't it? Um, we've got some advice from uh, Scotland. Do you know what I've realised oh. recently? I'm very good at giving advice, but I'm not very good at taking my own. If you don't okay. You don't want advice? Agony or the you know when you're in a situation and you know what you would advise someone else to oh, do, right. but you still oh, don't yeah, do it totally. yourself? Same. Yeah. I'm 100%. I think, that's, I think that's everybody. Yeah. 
Scott Kirkwood says, <laughs> Jason, you're not special, Adam. Shut no, up. no, I just mean, <laughs> I'm trying to make you feel better. <laughs> I'm um, trying to have a personality, bro. <laughs> Uh, me and my me missus. And everyone. Oh, it's written Glaswegian. Me and my missus have a wee one due in September. I'm going to do it as brothers really badly. Uh, I'm a season ticket holder at Rangers, and she's a season ticket holder at Celtic. Ooh. Oh, some weird sex. So, need the boys' views on what rules, uh, what the rules are before this ends in her being a single parent. For me, it's your support. You support who your dad supports. So, Very sexist. Little one on the way. Scott needs a, a bit of advice. What's happening here? This this is okay. a sectarian childbirth. That's tough, that. That's Who's taking tough. him to footy? Is she taking him to match? This should have been sorted long before yeah. you thought about having kids. Agreed. What, before they had sex? <laughs> but when they first started dating? I want you. I want you. Yeah. All this needs agreeing first. No, you can, you can have <laughs> Right a- in the middle of it, like... I'm a, I'm, listen, I'm about to come, but before I do, <laughs> who's your support? <laughs> if, if we get pregnant, <laughs> how good are your seats? <laughs> <laughs> You're not in the fucking main stand. <laughs> I'm behind the goal! <laughs> Some absolutely brutal Glaswegian accents by absolutely all of us. <laughs> Apologies, the whole of Scotland. If I started dating a girl, Right, and she was like, "Oh, my entire family are Man United fans." Mm. About like two weeks after we became officially together, mm. like ten, twenty dates in, whatever you are, right? I'd be like, "Just so you know, two weeks, twenty wow. dates." <laughs> Adam does not fuck about. No, two weeks after we've become officially a yeah, couple, oh, yeah, yeah, right? Right, 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 right? I'd be like, "Look, there's actually something we need to talk about. If this goes somewhere, we ever have kids, they're going to be a Liverpool fan." You're a crazy lady. No, I'm not. Tw- two, two weeks in to it being official. Yeah. Like, just let you know. You bring up babies, if we do have kids. If we ever have kids. Yeah. Two, 14 Listen, John, days. If we in. have kids. <laughs> <laughs> you're a beautiful woman, John. I'm falling for you. Even though you're a mank and a bloke. If we ever have kids. Do you think that'll put the girl off? You well, say if it does, yeah. she's not the one. She's not the well, so Yeah, There's I, th- I personally then. think that what's harder about that one is they're both seasons to get older. That's a big thing because often, oh. like with my wife, for example, she her family are all United fans. They're from Kent, obviously, and uh, they <laughs> I love it. It makes me happy that they just form into that fall into that cliche. Um, United she, do have a lot of Kents in their supportership. Nice, oh. solid. Let's give that what it didn't deserve. <laughs> I was like cunt. <laughs> Thank you, Carl. Thank you for clearing that one up. Sorry, Jason. So, uh, so yeah. So they. Um, so there was a United thing going on, but she's not that arsed, even though it's it's in the background of yeah. that family. So I was like, well, clearly they'll be Man City fans then. But the fact they're both season ticket holders, I think, is is. This a, sounds amazing. pretty. Uh, this sounds probably, pretty committed. I would pick a. I would probably pick a third team, a different team, maybe a lower league, someone else. That Partick Thistle. I don't think you can. <laughs> Just Let them pick when they're old enough, like Paul the Octopus. Green and white on one side, <laughs> green and white, blue on the other. And just yeah. see which way the baby rolls. Yeah, exactly. Paul the Octopus. It. Let him. Oh, he's fucking puked on the hoops. <laughs> he's a fucking Rangers. <laughs> mm. I, I, I think you. It's too late. He's not it, been born. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> too late. Can, 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 I, can I just can I just point out that when you're giving advice, you can't say it's too late. Like no. if, if you're writing into De- Deirdre, going, well, I don't know what I'm going to do because my fucking wife's sleeping with somebody else. Like, it's too late. <laughs> That's not advice. This should have been agreed on the third date. <laughs> Do you want spicy rice with this wrap? And, and, Janine. No, but let's be honest, right? <laughs> this is a, a relationship between a man and a woman, right? Oh, clear it out. You just, let's, <laughs> break, okay. back to All basics. Right. You're assuming a lot there, but okay. Right. <laughs> Let me break it down. Let me break it down. Right? Yeah. She's going to win because women win. Oh, hello. And okay. th- this kid is now going to be a Celtic fan. And there's nothing he can do. It is too late. My advice to him is to pray to God that this kid isn't really interested in football. Your God. Go to your church. Give it... (laughs) Give give her this one. And But you've got to... My advice to him is to... She's going to win anyway, so you might as well give her it and and sort of cash it in later. So instead of fighting for it, you go, look, right, obviously a big elephant in the room here. We're going to have a kid, going to be the Celtic Rangers fan. 
I love you. You're going to be the one going through childbirth. You can sort of raise this that? kid as a Celtic fan, but I get like four things I want in the future because this is a big thing. And if you use this to your advantage down the line, you can fucking back it into a corner. Mm. I don't know. I think it's, I don't know. What's Maybe, equal yeah. to this though? What would you ask for? Like the extra pizza slice or like a new car? You want to waste it. It's not like wishes. <laughs> it's like three wishes. You don't want to waste one. No, you get like the big ones. another thing that comes up like this. Let's say they're looking to buy a new house and she likes this one. He likes this one. He's like, we're getting this one. There's one done. He's still got three more to go. <laughs> Next kid. What's this going to be? It's probably bigger than the, who the kid supports, the house. What? I think that's bigger. Well, then she can tell him no then. Right. And so it's a like, second kid. It's a second kid, essentially. That's what you've got to do. Yeah, you've got to, if, you, if you, if you never, you can't have odd number kids. That's the, the rule. Because then you're going to have the imbalance. Yeah, I know, but he, if he lets her go first, he could ne- he could, he could have the name maybe, maybe right, Ooh, you have the name yeah. of the kid, and then he could <gasps> name it after like a Queen like Elizabeth. A, oh. Yes, <laughs> Queen Elizabeth, the fucking Celtic fan. Yeah. Or oh, do you know what you've stumbled onto the absolute perfect formula here? Yeah? Mm. Right? Orange. What you've got to do is you've got to find. I imagine he cares a lot about this, right? You've got to find something else that she gives a shit about a lot, and <laughs> argue to the death about that, and then be like, right. Well, you can call it whatever, or you can whatever, or whatever, but the kid is a Rangers fan. So you've either got to completely give it up now and cash it in later, or find something else she really gives a shit about and gaslight her until... <laughs> the, the longer he talks, the darker it gets. Just call the child Queen Elizabeth, William of Orange, Billy Boy, and then watch her put that on a fucking Celtic shirt. Or play for twins and have one each. Get in her head. Underminer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look, look. All right. Oh, yeah, advice. Jason, you've yeah. got twins. I have got twins. <laughs> Did she not want one of them as a, like, a United fan? No, she wasn't bothered. Really, yeah. To be honest, no. But every so often, um, the, the kids wind me up by saying they're going to be United fans. Because like, they know it's the one thing that will get her. Any emotion, yeah. But I remember saying it to my dad when I was a kid. Because obviously, when I was a kid, City were terrible. And United were winning everything. And I came up and I got picked on all the time at school. So I was like one of the few City fans. Because unfortunately, the, the, the cliche that United fans don't live in Manchester is not true. There are, there's actually loads of them. And I was at school for, and it was full of them. It was only me and David Lindsay, City fans. It's about half and half, isn't oh, it? Yeah, yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. Like that, the, like it, which yeah. is weird. Because when I gr- grew up there, it'd be like, oh, they're all from down south. You're like, no, when you're in Manchester, if it, only. But it, yeah. That would be a lot easier. And I came home from school one day after another, like, <laughs> Torrid day, and uh, we were getting beat like four one by Swindon and all this. And I came in. And I said, to, my dad was sat at the kitchen table. I said, Dad, I've got a great idea. I was about eight. I've got a great idea. And he went, What? I went, Well, you know, like City keep losing, and, and I keep getting picked on at school. <laughs> he went, Yeah. I went, I'm just looking at some of the United results. <laughs> Why don't we just support United? <laughs> And even now, when he looks at me, I can see it in his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> he lost a bit of love. Yeah, for like, I can He's still like, see he has I'll to remind himself to love me. <laughs> <laughs> I remember uh, when I was a kid, watching Michael Owen come on in the 98 World Cup against Argentina before he scored that goal. Mm. And I, I remember watching it with my dad. It's just a really clear memory I've got. I was like, my dad was like, oh, you want to watch this, lad? It's fucking brilliant. It's going to be the best player in the world, this kid. And I went, who's he play for? And he went, Liverpool. And I went, I'm going to support them then. I'm six. I mean, I was like, yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> and I really remember it really clearly. Well, just Frank like, Skinner used to say, I remember Frank Skinner used to do a line which was about to su- what team you support should be done with uh, a map and a ruler to sort of basically see where you were born and what the nearest ground is to, to yeah. where you are. So maybe that's something they could do is go work out where they live and which ground oh. is closest to where they live. Maybe we'll There's do many ch- things that can induce labour. So get a drive and past... Rangers ground and give it a curry. Yeah, it's where they live, innit? What do you mean? Not where they give birth. Not where they give birth. (laughs) No, you said where they were born. As in physically the hospital. Yeah. I don't care enough. (laughs) (laughs) Sums it up. Beautiful. (laughs) Get on board. Give it a curry and tickler outside Ibrox. Uh, I have a word. (laughs) Official advice. (laughs) It's what we fucking name the show. Um, this have a word is from a person. Have a word. Hey up, lads. Can you have a word with my missus? We, like a lot of other couples, 
uh, have lost the spark. It, we enjoy watching box sets instead. The problem is she falls asleep during every episode. She's tired, fair enough. But if I turn off the show and try and do anything else, she comes alive like a fucking Halloween decoration and makes me keep watching the TV. But I have to rewind back to what she's missed. Nope. She then falls asleep again. It takes nope. us two or three nights to watch ev- to watch every boxy episode. I'm over here blue balling it, wondering who the killer is in Mayor of East Town, and she's having a nap. Can you have a word with her to either get her on the Mozambique or let go of the dream of watching TV together because it can't make uh, can't because it can't take me longer to watch a show than it took them to make it. Get on me. Um, um, no, just tell her no. You love watching a box set with you. I do. But not under these circumstances. Oh, right. mm. okay. This is hostage situation shit. Don't be a hostage in your own home. I just think don't pick a box set that you care about, really. Do you know what I mean? Like, So save that for yourself. If there's something you really want to watch, that's what I do. Just make sure the stuff I really want to watch, I watch by myself. And then stuff that comes up in conversation, I go, oh, yeah, well, yeah, well what? So this? there's like a diplomatic box so if, set. So if you miss a bit, you go, oh, that's fine. You know what what I mean? if like, you have to watch? Like, see, the problem with that the is thing. the one that you don't really care about mm. in this situation the one he doesn't care yeah, about, so he's going to have to watch three, two, times. three times. But you could just get on your phone, can't you? And just have a little... Until <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my, my, my. If we're watching something together, yeah. me and Laura, so Ozark was the last one that mm. got us tuned in. Mm. We love Ozark, think it's really well made. If I dare, like if I get a message from the WhatsApp group for the podcast, which is work, sort of, <laughs> if I dare just even do a side link, oh, really? she pauses it and then just goes... Oh, I love that. Just wait till you're finished. We're Sour hypocrites, guesses. though, aren't we? Because I get annoyed if my wife looks at her phone while I watch something and, and vice versa. But then what you, the classic it, it always happens is you'd be, I'll be on my phone and she'll go, what are you doing? And I go, I'm just, I was just seeing what else he's, he's been <laughs> I am DB. I just want to see what he's been you're in. You're checking that on Twitter, are you, Jason? <laughs> <laughs> Look at your own this. mentions for that piece of information. <laughs> I can't watch things on me on me. I have to watch them with someone. I have oh, to watch them. Are you scared? <laughs> We're watching American Horror Story right now, oh, so is, when she falls asleep and that's on, I turn it off. Right. <laughs> have any of you watched Is It Cake? We yeah. watched an episode the other day. We had a party on 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 a Sunday for Mother's Day and my, my son's birthday. We ended up in the garden. Oh, God, I'm going to do another thing here. Anyway, we've got a telly in the garden. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, as soon as it came up, well, I was like, oh, fuck But it. if your house smells right like cat shit. Right shitty bang bang, we've got a, you we know. Got a telly in the garden. I'm not going to apologise. <laughs> Is that the late TV there, Jason? <laughs> And the kids were sort of like, we were trying to chat amongst adults. And, we, and I said, oh, just stick something on. So Netflix come on. And then this Is It Kate come on. In the end, there was like, we had like 40 people sat around watching it like it was the gut final. It's a mad show. Me, so, me and Etta sat there last week. Sometimes when we go on Netflix, if she's allowed to pick, it goes shit really quick. Yeah. So I have to sort of be like, not that one, darling, not that one. She picked Is It Cake? And the title is so simple. I was like, yeah. I can't resist. We watched the whole thing. She was so fucking into it. I love those moments where you can hang out with your five-year-old daughter and you're both into it. Yeah, yeah Just yeah, so totally. simple and well Halfway done. Halfway through episode one, I was like, couldn't believe I'd been talked into watching it. Yeah. And I'm like, right, how is this being made? This is one of the worst things I've ever seen in my entire life. And the host, by the way, oh, oh, it, he oh, owes the someone- host He owes hell. someone money. It's What's like he's going on with that guy. It's like he got sentenced and it's like, right, you can either do 25 years in a maximum security prison or you can host this show on Netflix. And he's like, I need three days to think about that. He fucking hates it. He's got no interest in bacon or cake whatsoever. Halfway through episode one, I was like, this is horrific. By the end of episode four, I was like, how is this not on every channel all day? <laughs> every day? They got an arena show. I get tickets for that. <laughs> It's a TikTok video turned into a TV series, isn't it? It's like it's a yeah. mad like thirty second clip into, but it's incredibly. It's watchable. the tacos. That was the what. That was when yeah. I went from like yeah, of course. No it's spoilers. A, it's I've a burger. It no spoilers, yeah, yeah, please. Right, well, mad shit is made into cake, but there are, there is a point where you're like, well, obviously it's not a cake because it's taco. Go fuck yourself, <laughs> you magician. It's yeah, mad. It's amazing. I'll watch it later. Yeah, it's well worth a watch. I'd say it's mad. I can imagine. But it's good I mean, turning never... your brain off telly, isn't it? Yeah, which is That's the type of thing sometimes. you can just be like on your phone. Yeah, that's what you. I think that's fine. I'm a little worried about my attention span. I think the, the era of scrolling, social mm. media, Instagram reels, TikTok has started to mess with my attention span. Because yeah. I am finding 100%. something on Netflix and going, oh, cool, Top Boy. 
Top Boy's just made yep. a second series on Netflix. Netflix. Yeah, I've heard good things. Top yeah. Boy is amazing. Watched it 10 years ago when it was Kano and your man from So Solid Crew. And and then is, Drake is one of the executive producers now. Got it remade because he watched it and was like, this is amazing. So Drake got it remade. Watched the series a few years ago. Excellent. Got halfway through episode one and I, I'd gone. I was, I was on my phone. Just because there's something about the long form of like, I've actually stopped what's going picking on? up. You know, if I see somebody on the phone in the audience, like I'd usually go, I'd like make a point of it and make them like a prick. And I've, I've got to a point now, post lockdown, where I think, oh, I can't. I just, Do you think because there's so many people doing they're just it? So, they're not been used to watching something for an hour and a half or an yeah, hour. It's a long it's so time. So long, it? you know, that you just you find something else to do. Well, I Netflix have started making short, short things. Mm. Like, there's some episodes that are 12, 13 minutes. Explains good. Because they've basically gone off the YouTube algorithm of, like, any more than 30 minutes, people are like, oh, God. Yeah. Well, then, but then Batman comes along at three hours, and you're like, come on. Was, you can't put three hours at the cinema and not put a break in or something. Like, it's mental. <laughs> an interval. Yeah, an interval at oh the cinema. God. Chuck Isis. That's what they need to oh, start so doing. so good. Yeah, that'd be sick. Cinema intervals? Cinema intervals. They, they used do that. to they have them. They used yeah. to have them. And um, back they used in the to day. have them. Yeah. And they still have them for Bollywood films because they're like eight hours. How long's back in the day? When are we talking? 90s? Well, when his mum no, was driving that car in 1954. <laughs> no, even back, back, like sort of 60s, oh, really? 70s. Yeah, in the interval at the cinema. Yeah. Oh, I remember going to Bambi and getting a chock ice in the interval. And maybe in the 80s, That's, actually. Yeah. yeah, you're probably right. Sick. I'd love that, yeah, man. Yeah, a little cinema break. Yeah, we're both old. Go fuck yourself. I've got another old person. <laughs> I always get rinsed for being old. You're not old, Dan. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, he, when he says Bambi, that was the premiere. <laughs> <laughs> He went to the black on my family. <laughs> the 80s and 80s he's talking about. <laughs> oh, I hate you a lot. <laughs> should, what a call, should we call it a pod? I think we should. I've got to get home, sort a uh, car park and space out, <laughs> and then uh, that I've bunged for, you know. And then I've got to get over to Manchester to open for Mr. Manford. Yeah, I was busy. And um, thank you for coming out, Joke. <laughs> You've, can you tell us where we can, obviously we know you and everyone Just knows everywhere. you, but you've got a podcast. I guess I have, yeah. I do, I do. Um, I feel like that's a good podcast. sell. Yeah, I do a radio show and then it turns into a podcast, but it's a good laugh actually. No, haven't you got the other podcast that you were doing? Wasn't it? No, no, stop. I, what, the, oh, I've pulled that one out of my butt cheeks. Oh, I did one with Judy Love for a little while. Right, little okay, while, cool. But, um, no, we, me and Steve Edge do one for Absolute, which is similar to this. Just, you know, chatting shit with your mate. You know what I mean? So, which is a lot of fun. Um, We've got a lot more rules than you, like Ofcom and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I actually got in trouble with Ofcom. Uh, I don't know if if, uh, if if I mentioned this. I've not mentioned it on the radio show, obviously. But um, I'll, probably get in I'll probably get in trouble for tell telling you about it. And basically what happened was, so we sometimes record on a Friday and it goes out on a Sunday morning. Somebody edits it. One of our producers edits it. And then it goes out on a Sunday with songs in between and all that. It's happy days. And... Um, one thing come up, we talk about New Year's resolutions at the beginning of the year, and a fe a, one bloke te texted in, uh, messaged in on, on social media, and he said to me, um, he said, Jase, this year I'm going to eat less and and swear less as well. I just, I'm swearing an awful lot at the moment. I'm just going to try and cut the two. And we sort of we did a few jokes about it, messing around, and we said, you know, the end of January, and Steve said, the end of January... You're just going to open the fridge and go, fuck it. It's <laughs> <laughs> you know, a nice little end Amazing. to that little bit. We thought, good. And then, because it was funny, we were like, oh, we'll just, even though it's swearing and it is national radio and there's kids listen, just, let's put a bleep in because it's a funny joke. You don't want to take away from the joke. So put a bleep in. Anyway, somebody forgot to put the bleep in. <sighs> and so on a Sunday morning, off it, you know, it actually came out. <laughs> fuck it. And I was actually at home listening, <laughs> listening to the show. It was on in the background. And uh, there was a anyway. It actually was no bother. It was one of those things that nobody really, you know, the listeners are pretty cool, and yeah. nobody really got you know too complainy about it. Um, a few people tweeted anyway. A few uh, maybe a week later, a few people tweeted complaining. No, just mentioning it. Yeah, just saying oh, oh naughty boys, like sort of thing. Just joking, yeah. you know. Off comma like basically HR for broadcasting. Yeah. So if anything goes wrong or you've got to complain about anything that's broadcast, then you it yeah, goes to them. They're like the head teacher. So a couple of weeks later, somebody eventually does find it and complains to Ofcom. Ofcom start to investigate. And, and anyway, it's all been fine. They, they pay a little fine and you do an apology and it, it sort of works itself out. I was annoyed about it for like a few weeks. Um, and I realised the reason I was annoyed is because it's not because a kid heard you swear. It's not because an accident happened and somebody wasn't doing their job properly. It's because you know that one of your listeners is a fucking grass. Yes. 
It's something about knowing that these people that you trust and love and talk to every week went, he fucking said that. Yeah. And it really wound me up. Well, Jason, you, yeah, could, you, could, you could... Slimy pig. You could, you could rob a bank <laughs> with this lot because the murder that we've got away yeah. with... So, well, guys. I know I've heard. I've heard it. I'm, I'm surprised you're still on air. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you keep saying no to all the mainstream money and you can say whatever you want, including fuck that grass and pig twack fuck. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't say that. He didn't, no, say, I it. didn't say it. I said I it. Say it. It was me. Nothing to do with him. Can't cancel his show. Come for me, you rat. You long tailed. That's fuck. from before, by the way. <laughs> this is just looks like Adam's had a stroke and gone mental. <laughs> This is all from before you arrived. <laughs> Just for a bit of context. Uh, cheers, uh, Jason. Really appreciate pleasure, it. Pleasure, lads. Well. Nice to see you. We have got an arena show on sale. Uh, it goes on Patreon pre-sale on Wednesday. It goes on public sale on Friday. That is the 6th and 8th of April, respectively. If you want those early access to the best tickets, make sure you're on Patreon to get it. And if you want to just wait till Friday, then fuck you. Do that. Uh, I've got a few tickets left for my tour shows, especially in the Isle of Man. AdamRow.co.uk forward slash shows. He's at DanNightingale.com. What? What's wrong with the Alamo? I have that as well in the Alamo when I go over. Thank fuck for that. Yeah, I have to really work hard to get that sold. There's something. Maybe you didn't. Villa Gatey. Villa Gatey, yeah. That's where I am. Maybe and you it's didn't a problem. Salute the fairies or something. Yeah. Some There's point. about 812 Which. people on the island, though. So you've. Yeah, there is. Fact that. that in. <laughs> oh, I need 38 people to come with me to the Isle of Man <laughs> and join the entire population at the show. Uh, thanks very much for listening, as always. Follow Jason, follow us, and have a good life. Bye, Felicia. <laughs> oh,